in season two here. I really feel like, you know, uh, Red Ditto. I mean, all, honestly, all the Ramathal players are really, really strong. Super Noon, Solstice, Ramathal, SQ. Uh, those are the four Ramathals that we have here in this tournament today. And they're all so strong. And actually, interestingly, all for very different reasons as well. They have a lot of different skills. But I feel like Red Ditto has, you know, has a lot more of the tech. SQ and Red Ditto have the tech, I feel like. Mm -hmm. When it comes to, like, you know, aggression, I also think that Red Ditto is really good at, like, taking that momentum with them. You know, I always, I always, I always uh, cite Dulce as being the most aggressive Ram, but I think Red Ditto is, like, right in the element. And how he uses RC Bar is really cool, too. Super, ball break, ain't going to wait for that pressure. Got the Oki going to form close slash. Yes, sir. In the push of the corner, plus frames. And this is hard. No reversal. The air to air right there. And again, Red Ditto, when he puts him in the corner, he spells blood and it gets real aggressive with it. Yeah, as we mentioned, you know, a lot of the characters are kind of like that in this game where, you know, they do put you in the corner and you die, but a lot of them also have trouble fighting out of the corner as well, right? Like we said, it, when you get put in the corner in this game, it's very, it's, 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 it's a bad, it's a bad look. It's a bad look, but some characters definitely have even a harder time getting out of the corner than others. Oh, nice! Just drops the and drops the minion and goes low. Here's this corner position here. More bottle. Oh, you can't block. Oh, God. Yo. Oh, I I I found a way to find some defensive play. If I got that super bar at the bottom, you gotta worry about me, buddy. You gotta worry about me on your press. You gotta worry about me. More about those murders she wrote for the first or second one. I should say to get it done for Red Dodo. And dang, it's like I had the wink of this right there put you in the corner and put the minions to work. But despicable me, we see right here, Red Ditto with the super, putting it two up on the board. And one more to put Nitro down and losers. Oof. Hey, two to zero for Red Ditto here. Looking pretty do solid and dominating right now. I do hope we can get a chance to see the, um, uh, the partnered players leaderboards right now because I want to see where Red Ditto is ranking in this because I know that Red Ditto has been playing really, really well throughout this entire season. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hopefully we get that uh, information right after, but just gets in with the throw after the Oki. There you go. Saw the FD bubble, immediately went in for the throw, and that's the only thing you got to worry about anyway with this character. I, you got to get these better round stars, Nitro. You already got the bar built up because the new positive or the, the, the change to the minions letting you have the minion bar stocked up and locked up. But if you can't get the knockdown, it's hard to get these minions out and about. And then oh. once again, Morabato. Dash cancels into Morabato. And now the pressure found his way out. Going to use the RC, but didn't pop uh, Ramathal high enough. He couldn't run under and get to the other side. Didn't get the side switch on that, unfortunately. So, still trapped in the corner. Red Ditto sees that Nitro is playing very defensive. Finds the opportunity just to run up, get the throw, and there it is. 3-0 Red Ditto. Mm. Mm -mm. I actually feel sorry for Jacko. Despite the fact that <laughs> if she gets going, it's it's hard to stop. And we've seen the nasty mixes and things like that, not only from people like, uh, you know, from Adventure, but also Nitro. I've seen some nasty sequences, and he, he wants to slug it out, uh, you know, in the neutral too as well. Like, he wants to try to slug it out with the butts of the character and then set up shop with the minions. But that's kind of the real house, not only for Ram, but more importantly for Red Diddle, how they want to play. When they put in the corner, it's just open up over and over again. Yeah. That's the win, Red Ditto, 3-0. Okay, so Red Dead is going to move on. I'm trying to see. Okay, yeah, we are going to get Bean versus Solstice. We are going to get that match, it looks like, nice. coming up on stream here. Nice. All right, all right. <clears throat> okay. All right. So look at the leaderboard right here. Oh, there we, we are. Okay, okay. As you, oh, as you suspected. Wow. As you suspected, we'll be in first place. Hippus in uh, second. Jonathan in third. Red Ditto in fourth. Razo in fifth. Solstice in sixth. And Shine in seventh. That is not how I expected this board to come out at all. You know, obviously, Jonathan Tene and Razzo have been so consistent, but I mean, Tempest at second place makes so much sense. And uh, obviously, I think first place does get uh, 100 points or something like that. No, uh, I forgot what the number was, but uh, I, the way that Tempest is playing here, Tempest is moving on here. 
I don't expect we're going to see a change in the uh, in the placements here. It probably will be Umi Show and Tempest uh, getting to maintain their sponsors guaranteed. But again, a lot of these players uh, were like, for example, Solstice was Excedrin last season, got to keep mm-hmm. on uh, with uh, Excedrin this season as well. So, you know, players like Jonathan Tenney, Red Ditto, Razzle, Solstice, and Shine can all still manage to keep their sponsors going into uh, season three of Series E. Oh, my man says season three. That's what it be. Let me find out. Let me find <laughs> out. We got to get back up on the mic. But I do want to say, if you're a sponsor watching, it would be in your best interest to keep all of these players as much as possible. If you're, if there are players that you see that are not sponsored, jump on that right now. I saw Oni picked up, uh, picked up Nubenheimer. What a big, big bet on them, and they definitely are walking away with a smile on their face as they head to the bank. If you are a sponsor, you need to be picking up someone like Lean Bean Fighting Machine, who's getting into Solstice with the round start. Yeah, again, second place at CEO Otaku, top eight at EVO, being clearly one of the strongest players that we have in NA as well. So, uh, yeah, definitely would be a great pick, and starting out strong here versus Solstice. Look at this. This goes in for the, the safe jump timing. I like this to win that 6K. He yeah. knew it was coming. That's the closer <laughs> right there. Only closer get coffee, Bean. Yeah, Trying to Bean find the is finish. all about that 6K and uh, <laughs> finishes it off with that so often. But, you know, that's the thing. Bean does such a good job, and I've mentioned this many times, going low constantly. There's a sweep right there. Oh, goes for the throw as well. There's the meaty, and here's the pressure. The lows again, the low again. Bean is so good at keeping you honest, but as a player, when you're fighting against Bean, you gotta realize when you're about to die, that 6K is coming. <laughs> mm -hmm. If he has got the bar to do so, we've seen it without the bar sometimes, but right now, for the pin through the wall, yes, sir. Solstice needs one good touch to steal it. Far slash or dash up. Just gonna wait a little bit. There's the far slash. Delayed. Delayed. Yeah, the, the smart thing about what Solstice did there is he whiffed the crouching kick and then threw out the far slash. Bean is really good at waiting until you whiff a button and then just running in. Instead of trying to punish your negative frames, he uses it as a way to get in and start the offense. So he's waiting for you to whiff buttons. So he might have actually reacted to that whiff 2K and tried to run in. And then Solstice was like, nah, I'm throwing out this far slash right away. Oh God, the overhead. Oh, oh you're dead. Bean. Absolutely a machine right here. Being able to stay solid against someone like Solstice, who has such great aggression and had that great transitional, you know, utilizing that transition right there to that 2K little, you know, make him, make him flinch a little bit, but being staying solid and taking that first match. And, you know, you're pointing out some good stuff about Bean's gameplay. He likes to stay outside that distance to find the whip punch against like far slash and things like that and kind of start up the gameplay. We saw that with Marvello, the footsie play. But I think Bean, when it comes to footsie play, I think Marvello is better about the footsies. But when it comes to the mix ups, Bean's got that nasty tech on the yeah. deck, you know, the space traps and things like that, that keep him real nasty. And it's important to make a distinction too, because like sometimes what Bean does isn't even necessarily with punish, but with pressure, I almost want to mm. call it, you know, because you miss the button and then he runs in. He doesn't necessarily punish you, but that's how he gets in. And oh my God, the single hit confirmed into the super off of the low Rekka to get the hard knockdown. Also a Bean special right there. Looking for the counter hit. Also be situations. Red RC after the uh, fa yeah fast cancel right there. That with the positive tension being built up means it's pressure city. What? Yo, that risk gauge six K six K opener in play. Big Bean. No with bar at all to cancel. You so with the so positive good. meter bonus. Did he have like a full meter when he started no. that? Because he looped no. that like like four times in a row. Is that self-sustaining pressure right there? I need, to, I need a replay on that one. That was crazy. I looked at that bottom. That buddy did not have full bar unless my eyes deceive me. Because <laughs> Buddy definitely put up that 6K for the end right there. But that was a good situation because he knew that was going to find the finish the next combo. And right now we're seeing a similar situation. Oh. He's one more touch of seal. Ah, oh. oh, 6K. Again, and that's the win with the super. And, and did you see it? When the 6K came, he did Rekka, second Rekka, caught Solstice low, counter hit, 
and then immediately then went for the overhead. So he got the low punish, put that fear of the low into your heart, and that's when he decided to go for that 6K. That was crazy. <laughs> Oh, and shout outs to Zando in the chat as well. What's up, Zando? Hey. Also, top eight at CEO Taku, tied with uh, Tempest NYC, and also top eight at Combo Breaker as well. So, uh, Zando also clearly one of the strongest players in the world because uh, Zando mm -hmm. from the EU regions. Yeah, definitely top three in the EU, clearly. Definitely top three in the EU, along with Leffen and uh, Latif. But in the US, we got B versus Solstice right here. He didn't work out here, so I can't say that. So, yo, know, Zando, you kind of cook it, bro. <laughs> but being up on the screen, getting the hit into the super after the two piece special. Oh, my God, the family meal. And you know what? If Bean can keep this up, it's definitely going to be a happy meal for him because he <laughs> will be able to take this. Look at this pressure. It is a self sustaining. Oh! Is that actually self sustaining there? Like, cause I was watching the meter that time. He spent the RC and by the time he had the second loop in there, he had built the entire bar back. I haven't seen Bean do that until today. Is that, is that new or just have I just missed it that he's done it in the past? Like I I'm literally Bean's... like hands up to the head right now, dude. I'm like, what? I think Bean's being more consistent with that. Cause that's kind of the wicked issue of the chip now is like, you get the fast RC cancels, you put it through the mixes with it, you know, deal a lot of damage. It's just the 6Ks that he has sprinkled out. It's less like, it's hard to read when the 6Ks come through. He does it without bar. And now, once again, might be a similar situation. Dash up, throw on the FD Red RC. That's my victory. Ooh, 6H. Oh. Big bean, like a machine. Stay in me, no bean. <laughs> and Take thank it. you for uh, Lost Soul confirming. Yeah, Bean's been doing that for a while. I, I don't know why, like, I feel like I haven't seen it or maybe I just didn't notice it or something, but that is nasty because you're just stuck there and you are taking all of that risk gauge and all of that block. It is just continuously self-sustaining so he could just keep looping it in the quarter until the positive meter bonus goes away. That is terrifying pressure in the corner over there. And Bean, again, just coming in here and doing some massive damage with this character with the chip it's bad i thought you know, chip's bad though you know <laughs> if your win condition is to is to be able to apply a lot of pressure with punish and then get the wall break in the super and these nasty mixes and things like that with fast rc i don't think the character can be bad you know what i'm saying as you see right here look at this pressure look at this oh, gets the rc yeah. right after check the bar at the bottom rc again uh-huh yeah uh -huh. it is absolutely it is. Over self over sustaining again. dude but look at that. that look james no part the bottom to 6k rc right after if he would have had that block it would have punched us also would have been out of there that is the new part i think of beans game plan that we're seeing more the 6k even without the bar that he has to utilize sometimes he and now he waited and baiting right there for the burst over that that's how you're nasty bean that's why I know you're nasty. Because that's the thing is, 6K in the RC is usually how he gets the damage off of that. But if he cranks up your wrist cage like that, you get automatically counter hit when you have the, 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 the warning symbol there. So then he mm -hmm. doesn't need the meter anymore. So when you're fighting against Chip and you're expecting the 6K in the RC because you see he has the meter for that, he doesn't even have the meter for the RC and he can continue the combo because, dang, that's... That's gross. <laughs> yeah, it's, that's right. Yeah, the quick RC change made it so that you don't spend as much meter. Oh, God, that's, mm -hmm. that's gross. That's disgusting. We're, we're getting I don't more like continuous being, with it. I don't like you, you being don't, anymore. No, <laughs> you don't like being? That's okay. <laughs> okay. You know why I do love? Jake and Yeso. Listen to them. We love you too. Oh yeah. That's all I have to say about that. Uh, we are all the way now through winners round one. Still plenty uh, to play here, but we've got some really good sets so far. Oh yeah. And it started with Nubenheimer <laughs> keeping the ball rolling from oh, yeah. CEO Taku last weekend. A dumpster. Yeah, not, three, nothing against Yuri Cobb, but like I said Woo! it, I said it right before we got into those matches. I was oh. like, congratulations, Nubenheimer, for moving on. Mm -hmm. Exactly what happened. You take Nubenheimer with such an explosive game plan against Millia. She's got no guts, no glory, no nothing left after that, and it was a bad hair day and a half where the 
You, know, you can say that. You don't go to the samurai barber. That's all I'm going to say, right? No. Not good. Not you, good. That fade is not going to look great. Right? You get all cut up. Like, <laughs> yeah. you remove the hat, you're looking like this. Bald. Uh-huh. Not uh-huh. good. The hairline is going to be real, real ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, we roll that right into Marvello. We got a good, Ooh, that was a good, good little dose of chip here, here on the back half of winners round one. And Marvello taking down Razo. And this is Razo attempting to jump up into fourth place. Yep. Yeah. Has the opportunity to pass up Red Ditto tonight. Yep. But couldn't take care of business here in Winners Round One. Is going to have to make the long trek through losers, which, if memory serves, Razo did and made top four in one of the last two series. I think Razo yeah, has yeah, yeah. done that long run recently yeah. and been successful. The losers with it, but run. It's just yeah. So much more difficult. It's a, it's a lot of work. It's a lot more games to play yes. and a lot more mental stack. And, um, I mean, dealing with. Chip is something that's really hard, and we mm-hmm. saw that in the latest set that we had too, where Solstice, you know, af- after a strong report- performance and Exard, um, not, We're back. not, yeah, got hit by Bean. Yeah, <laughs> and it's it's rough, man. You can hear the crowd cheering all the way here in the Series E lobby, but um, yeah, I mean, the matches that we have coming up are really exciting as well. We get to Ooh, see the yes. other end so, of Nubenheimer versus Chip. So let's so let's roll through that then, top to bottom, Umisho SQ. Let me show. Yeah. Jonathan Tene, Tempest. Jay that Na- should be a good set. Jay Nasty. I'm going with Tempest. I'm going with Jay I just Nasty. think Tempest has been, He's been so clean. the better player as of late. I feel like Jonathan has taken a step back or two. I think that is still Jonathan Tene, still pro- probably the best Zato in North America. I'd say that's probably still fairly it's definitive. Pretty good, it's, yeah. But I feel like where... Other players in that kind of upper echelon, you look like top 10 to 12 players have either maintained form or taken a step forward or two. I think Jonathan has taken a step back uh, okay. as of late, so I'm, I'm leaning Tempest in that set. Neumannheimer Marvello, we were talking about this a little bit in the break because we knew it was coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are your thoughts on this one? I mean, it really depends on how well Neumannheimer is at containing Chip. We saw what he was able to do against Bean. Sure. Um, it's how do you translate that against Marvello because Marvello does play a different style. Okay. Um, and both of them are like valid Chip players, uh, two of the strongest Chip players in the U.S. So um, Neubenheimer's got their money cut out for them. We've seen Neubenheimer fall 0-2 at Series E before, but after sure. that CEO Otaku win, you have to be feeling confident. And uh, Bean versus Red Ditto, again, Ram Chip. It's uh, we saw what just happened. So Bean's just like, hey, I get to play the same match again. Give me the Ram. I mean, Bean should be feeling good going into the set, but I also feel like Red Ditto and Solstice two very different players. Oh yeah, mentally. Yes. Uh, 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 especially because uh, you know Solstice and Solstice has been open about it on social media. The the, the struggles with continuing to grind Guilty Gear. And the Ram uh, and certainly their placements oh, have, yeah. been, have been difficult. Uh, and of course, you know, I can I can sympathize, man. Yeah, playing at the top level, playing under that spotlight, incredibly difficult. Mm-hmm. Um, but we hope Solstice can make some magic happen down in the lower bracket. But that should be uh, four really really fun sets. Yeah, very compelling one. It's, I, in my opinion, I feel like the most lopsided set feels like Umisho SQ. I mean, SQ definitely. And that's just like the Umisho effect. Uh, yeah. It feels like. I mean, Umisho has been showing some cracks in the armor lately, so I, I, sure. I definitely can see it from SQ consistently performing in Series E and other tournaments as well. And I wanted to give a quick shout out to another Ram player in the loser side. Super Noon did take it over stealth. Yeah, three two. So let's I was go. Wrong. Shout outs. So we're keeping Valorant uninstalled. Good stuff. Man. <laughs> Continue moving forward. And yeso has got something to tell us as we move forward through the rest yes, of the day. Yes, and I will say before we do that, uh, Super Noon will have to play the loser of Nubenheimer Marvello. Oh, if that sets the stage for you anymore, Ooh. looking at the loser side of the bracket. But, yes, I do have something to say. Let's talk a little bit about PVE. You're a gamer. You like to compete. You like to win cash, right? I mean, you're. I think you're okay at I'm Dragon right. Ball Finals. I'm all right at games. Like, Got fourth place in the tournament uh, once. Former like bronze four league juggler. Uh, but oh, relax. If you, like comp- <laughs> if you like competing in esports and you also like winning cash, PVE is the place for you. The competition for you. You can go out to your local esports arena today and compete every single week in a range of different games and modes from things like Apex Legends, Guilty Gear Strive, Halo Infinite, Aim Labs, Valorant, and more. We're keeping things fresh, mixed up every single week. All you have to do, go out, purchase some tokens, enter in the leaderboards you want to compete in, put up your best scores, and you can win. We have thousands of dollars in pricing 
every single week and you can keep track of your scores and all of your competitor scores on our 24 seven YouTube live stream. So use exclamation point locations in Twitch chat right now. You can find an eSports arena near you and you can go out and compete in PVE today. And if you got a better gun run score than our man Fizzy here, gun run's been an absolute banger, fantastic limited time mode in Apex Legends. If you're good at gun run, head out to eSports arena and you can compete. That's hard, that's hard, man. Apex has so much going on at the same time, but if you're a god gamer, you can get that money, you get that cash, and you can win it fast. I wouldn't know. Playing, yeah, I can't do it. I not, wouldn't know. Not myself. Mm -mm. Not an Apex player, but I am a Guilty Gear player and a Guilty Gear enjoyer, and we've got more to enjoy coming up soon. Oh, so yes, stay tuned, do. because Yeso and I have more Guilty Gear to break down. Welcome back, everybody, to Series E, Serious E, as we like to call it over here. Uh, we have just finished the first round of the winner's side of the bracket here in Week 16, the final week of Season 2. And we do have some more results here on the loser side of the brackets. Razzo has defeated Yurikov 3-0. to zero. But we are going to be moving on to the winner side with Umi Show versus SQ. Jay Nasty versus Tempest. Nubenheimer versus Marvello. Peanut versus Red Ditto. What do you think of these matches coming up, Cola? Are these supposed to be, uh, you know, early pools matches? Are these supposed to be, you know, early matches? Supposed to be <laughs> this sounds like a top eight. Never mind. This sounds like grand finals. Half the dang time of any, you know, tournament that you might see. But you're getting out here at Series E with the quickness, with the expeditiously. We're going to get grizzly as we watch these players tear into each other for the final night. I think all these are just going to be super hyped. They've already been super hyped tonight. They've seen some great uh, play from the chip players, kind of bringing up with the character and making sure people understand how nasty that character can be. We saw a little bit of an upset right there as Marvello getting revenge against Razo. After that, uh, you know, that that first of whatever they had. Was it first of 15, I think it was? Now it's first of set. Now it's first of 17. And, and <laughs> my fellows have taken that victory. But it's not over. They could run into each other later on in the bracket. But I'm excited to see, you know, the variety we have for the characters, the players, as they all try to take that stop, that top spot for the money and to really perform for the, the sponsors. We talked about the sponsorships that they could possibly keep still. Even if they're not in the money with the points, the sponsors could still be like, you know what? You played really well today in the previous days yeah. that... It's a good investment. And honestly, sponsors, look at me. Look at me right now. It's a good investment. <laughs> Keep the players. Keep the players. Yeah. I'm just saying. I mean, again, so many of these players performing so excellently week after week after week with, uh, you know, Jonathan Tene and Razzo and, uh, you know, in third and fourth place, I think it was. No, Razzo was in fifth place, actually. And again, these two players top eight at CEO Taku. And again, this partnership here, these partners, it's it's really nice. I mean, they get a they get a, a, a nice little small stipend for being partnered with them, but they're also paying for their travel to a lot of these events. So you know, players like Jonathan Tene and Razo and Tempest and everybody, these partners are actually uh, uh, you know helping afford them be able to travel to CEO CEO Taku to ECT to Evo to Combo Breaker. And I right. mean, let me tell you. 
flights and hotels are like one of the the, the biggest expenses of these Ooh. events. In fact, if not the biggest expense of these trips, and to be able to have that covered is amazing. So shout outs once again to all of our partners, you know, for supporting these players and supporting the fighting game community like this. And it's such a wonderful program that we have here at Series E. I mean, to be honest, as you put it, you know, the money that's being spent is quite a bit with it. And we're in the midst of an Arc Revo tournament series. So as well as to get out there, to be able to have these players out there to play and really put their name on the deck right there is super great. Razor's own Umi going up against SQ. Let's see what it do. Round Star SQ already getting the throw. That's interesting. It wasn't the low kick into sweep as we standardly <laughs> see in this game. It was actually just low kick and then run up and throw. Run up and throw. Oh, no try to run up and do something again but got back thrown in you're in the corner now and we know the kind of damage umicho can do in the corner especially when you get the concentration meter like that but sq gets the side switch and now sq has the corner pressure that just defend uh oh got hit with the record but not the third one rc to keep the pressure going interruption right there umi preventative measures burst to get some distance with it but this is fine for umi they they're willing to play the system but they don't have any shots in the glock Nothing in stock. Ooh, tried to go for that little fadeaway there, but Umisho backdash, and neither of them did anything afterwards. Umisho trying to go for the mix-up, does get it. Oh, reloads, missed time the meaty, and now Chip is a threat. Chip is on the board, but here comes SQ with the tap dust into RC. Gets the round win with the burst safe combo. We've seen that time and time again, the burst safe combos right there from SQ. I mean, you know what to do with Ram. You got a lot of burst com or burst safe combos to land, but the fact that the matter is the SQ's been so consistent with it is real nasty. Looking out for the defensive measures of Umi, but here we go. All offense, all damn day is Umi. Fantastic play. You see that they're stocked up and locked up with the reload and the full concentration of the max plus frames. SQ try not to open up too much the throw. Dude, that mix-up from Umi Show was disgusting. Actually, <laughs> earlier. too much. Oh my god! It's just like every hit, like there's like seven hits in a row, and every one of them is a guess which way to block. I swear, just, you're never safe against Umi Show's uh, happy chaos. Oh, oh nice. BRC! Oh, yo. And the follow-up, oh, jump oh. back. This is good. That burst that's actually worked out for Umi. Because they can choose how they want to come through. They have that ba da ba ba ba. I'm loving it. Wait, that's not the same thing to have it your way. That's a different thing. Anyway, great play here from Umi bringing it back. I'm hungry. Oh, man. I mean, so is Umi show right now with the way that she's playing here. Trying to get this mix. But again, SQ, very technically sound uh, Ramathal player, but getting opened up. I mean, you could be as technically sound as possible, but these mix ups from Umi show from Happy Chaos. Are ridiculous like i said better four-way mix-up than milia even has and uh, th that's that's straight up from the mouth of yipes man that's what mm -hmm. he said so <laughs> he wouldn't lie to the people and, and you know he's a he's a milia player so he <laughs> he, he has thoughts he, he has, has thoughts. thoughts on umi shows uh, i'm sorry on happy chaos's four-way mix-up <laughs> We all do, but you got to give love to the narrative of the neutral right here. The mid-range, the close-range buttons, the comfortability that we see from Umi in this matchup. I mean, you know, you have to make that switch as a Happy Chaos player. We say that so consistently. You cannot play from long range. We've seen some Happy Chaos players probably do so, but they don't really, you know, get the same results that Umi and Lost Soul be doing. And Umi doing really good in terms of defense. We see a lot of eye beasts, so actually both players. But a lot of eye beasts in general find the caps like that and keeping a nice lead and fling fully stocked up. One of the things that makes Happy Chaos players so strong is when they are good at resource management. And I'll tell you, that is not easy to do with this character. All right, and now SQ trying to win this neutral. And again, Ramathal definitely dominates the neutral basically against almost every character except for Nagora Yuki. And yet somehow Umi Show finds a way in every time, finds the gaps, finds the way to dash in and catch with the low kick in the sweep. And now here we go, the corner ring and just lifts up the gun and you're through the wall. <laughs> you're about to fall. Right oh. there, Umi just put on so much pressure against SQ. Counter hit, Rekus actually get with the distance to the second to third hit, the dash up throw. That momentum that she has to skate step in makes it so hard to deal with. Like, it's going to be a close slash, and you just end up holding all these throws after the FD and more about the murder she wrote. Oh, One more okay. touch, and 
Wonderful but you saw that, saw that beautiful sequence from SQ there. Did the fade away, got hit, hit Umi Show with the overhead, followed up immediately with empty jump into throw, meaty, and then empty jump into low. So going three different options in a row off of the same setup and catching Umi Show three times in a row with that mix up is what got her the perfect here. The AM1 makes it get it done. Heavy shots on the clock. Using that heavy shot, just get a, you know that pop up and some corner carry. Two D concentration. Think about it. Counter oh. hit. Oh, baits out the burst. Gets that oh. thirst quench and the wall break. Far back and then some with the tension to send him to the next dimension. SQ's got a lot of bar on their side too as well. Why RC take the third back like that? Yep, a nice little last second air dash. Caught Umi Show, but actually either dropped the combo, was expecting Umi Shows to burst, and SQ might have been trying to get it. Wow, a block against the tap dust. Umi Show has been finding that mark, um, you know, landing that so often. Uh, very rare to see someone actually block it. Mm, I like this aggression right here from SQ, knowing that those no bullets under the clock, you only got to worry about the normals. RC into the super. All I see is victory. SQ. Not gonna Wait. kill. Yes, okay, it will. Okay. Yes, it will. <laughs> I'm so I lied to every single one of you. And you know Dude, what? Can you I'm blame glad me? you said it because I was like, I don't think this is. And you're like, not gonna kill. And I was like, okay, you know what? I'll let I'll let <laughs> uh, I'll let Cola, I'll let Cola, little, little, I'll let little, Cola little. take the responsibility on this one. Okay, I'll let you. You got it. You got. It. Thank you. <laughs> Pain. Oh man. Pain. Ooh, okay. good stuff right here. 1-1, one, one. and like I said, and like you said, actually, you know, obviously it's awesome to see someone like Umi Show dominate and play so well, but when you see the other players catch up and start to, you know, be able to challenge and fight back and win, it's, it just makes it that much more entertaining because, you know, the parity and just the skill level continues to get stronger and stronger. So I, you know, it's, it's great that we see that Umi Show is working harder and harder every week to be able to take these tournaments yeah we don't want like players to be lacking and slacking and things like that i don't want like these players to be like oh yeah you know i'm just winning every single week and that's how it was for hotashi for a little bit we saw a player base <laughs> rise the occasion right now sq is about to make umi fall into losers with this aggression not letting umi get anything off at all none of these shots in the clock not even fearing any of these buttons having the great, great ram play oh you couldn't what? even concentrate these are crazy blessing the dome I feel like that might have been an execution error from Umi Show to just go for a raw concentration buildup in the middle of neutral like that. But again, I remember, I think two weeks ago, Umi Show was sent to loser's bracket early on with an upset as well and came back and ended up winning the tournament. So, mm. you know, obviously Umi Show very capable of making it out of the loser side bracket, but Umi Show, oh boy, not gonna have the opportunity to use the burst at all. Is this gonna kill? Not quite, not quite. Might as well. One good touch will seal it. And if you're Umi, you gotta play this damn near perfectly side switch with it. Concentration to make sure the shots are gonna hit the BRC. <laughs> BRC, I should say. 5K and play with the starter. Slump Dog Millionaire. The throw, though. Oh my god, Umi with the fadeaway. Swish, swish. Putting it back in her hands. Yeah, no, we didn't have a tournament last week because of CO Taku, so it was the last tournament. So yeah, it definitely was two weeks ago. Oh, yep, there's the classic, the jump punch right there, the pressure, and a burst from Umi Show just doesn't want to be in the corner. Going to use the clone to try to reload, but you got caught. You ran past the clone, and SQ swung away. Look Super. at this damage. That's a lot of red. She's almost dead. Life alert. YRC okay. to stop the sword spin situation. Umi, got to make this back from the brick. Can she do the oh. same thing she did previously? 2D. Concentration, bust on the gun, Throw unleashed. Now. Yeah, see, I, I, w I was feeling like SQ did. I, I was pretty sure Umi Show was going to go for a roll into the gunshot to be able to get the side switch into the corner. That's what my mind was. And then Umi Show went with the tap dust instead, then went with the throw. Almost got SQ into the other corner, all the way on the other side. But SQ finding the, uh, finding the will and the way to get that uh, uh, defensive check against Umi Show. And now SQ goes up two to one against Umi Show. The, is the way the ram? Is that how we take down 
Happy Chaos is, is that the Happy Chaos Discord? They got a RAM section. It's lit up in white. There's a million messages. I knew it. I actually knew that RAM was good in this match. But honestly, to be real, the way the SQ's playing has been fantastic. On defense, they've been really great. And the utilization of like far slash and how much they get in terms of counter hit has been really good. However, Umi with a fantastic round start oh. with the strike throw pressure, and he's gonna get the curse and the I got a Glock and my Rory shots of the Glock with the super ankle stop. Oh man! And here we go, Umi show working on this extended perfect. Basically, gonna yeah, it is a perfect right there. So Umi show coming right back in here, trying to send a message to SQ. Not going down easily. This is still gonna be the hardest fight of your life at this point. Absolutely, SQ playing with that far slash range, which is possible, gets the hit, counter hit, sword explosion, the staircase to hell. Ooh, wall break. Yeah, of course, of course. How and confident they are that five, that far slash. S, five, eight, Yeah, and again, mm -hmm. just using the RC after the sword toss wasn't going to combo, but gets the corner, going to be able to RC, get the hit over here. Umi show no reason to spend that burst. And you know what? Answer a perfect with a perfect right back. That is how you send a message as SQ. Match point for SQ. FD immediately sees it, goes for the throw. This time the low, but the burst though. And the far slash once again. How many? We need to counter how many times SQ has landed that far slash because that has put them <laughs> in position to put Umi in the corner. And not only that, to start their pressure their approach, Umi not being able to find there a way to again. get that button. You got to watch out for the button. It looks like there's not much Happy Cast can really do against that button just to get the shots to the clock. But Umi wants to spin that for moments like this. It has the meter oh, right man. here. Going to super through the wall. Uh, is this going to kill? It's going to come close. Not quite. Okay. SQ with an opportunity has meter for our BRCs, but now time to get chip concentration meter. We've gone to pre patch, pre patch Ooh. happy chaos. Once you manage to activate that super, and Umi show ties it up two to two. We ain't done just yet, not even close to being done. He's gonna be the winner out here, but. I do like the switch up from Umi. You know, there, there's a there's an aspect of the Happy Chaos that is not discussed by the, the haters. I mean, yeah, you can hate this character <laughs> all you want, but you have to play perfectly in terms of meter management. We see better management of the bullets and the concentration, and now we see the more consistent amount of pressure that Umi's able to get into these sequences that lead up to tension, that lead up to the max concentration super right there to stay solid and more aware. Umi on game point with SQ, immediate burst right there early in the game after that three-fourths area hit with the health has been sapped away. Right, back to the full screen over here doing minor zoning here, but again, concentration <laughs> meter drains faster the farthest you are, farther away you are. So Umi Show is, you know, similar to that adventure strategy. You zone briefly just to find your way in, but SQ has found her way in, and here's this pressure, the trade, and the BRC to escape to get that distance again. The RC, the PRC baits out the YRC. The explosion's gonna catch SQ once again. Back to match point. Back and acting like she ain't ever even left it, to be honest. Far slash again, before we can even get the gun out. I got that sword out and about. Back dash, just to defend. Doesn't really matter because SQ's been spacing themselves out really well. This time, close slash. Super. More about, though. More to time. And it's one good touch right here from SQ. If they get a counter hit, that'll do it. Burst. All plus. All plus again. Pressure. And now gets the throw. And SQ does it. Sends Umi Show to loser's bracket with the Ramlethal. SQ. Ramlethal. Doing it big Ooh. here in this tournament. Ooh. 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 That's, uh, <laughs> that's SQ kind of working. I see you, SQ. I, yeah. <laughs> you, that far <laughs> slash. I like their, 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 their game plan. I feel like when it comes to Ram players, you know, game plan wise, as you can, you can clearly see a game plan. Not seeing the other Ram players don't have a game plan, but they have such a defined game plan when you see them play. You understand what they want to go for. And maybe sometimes that might hinder, but I feel like not really, because you see right there, the idea is to far slash at that, at that mid range, the close range space, and not, you know, obviously getting the close slash range. But utilizing that button to stop 
Moving before they can come in and get these good round starts and begin to put the pressure with the flips over and over again. FB not getting enough space up with this place and SQ just taking down Umi, putting them into losers. This, I, again, like I like you had said that I said, what I like to see, I like seeing these top players go down to other players, mm -hmm, seeing mm -hmm, SQ mm -hmm, get stronger, mm -hmm. stronger, because Umi's gonna come back stronger. SQ's are <laughs> super strong with it. It's, it's no, everyone's a saying. And here we go. We've got Jonathan Tene versus Tempest. Who's the top player going down here? I mean, like, it's both of yeah, them. Yeah, they're all top players. <laughs> Either one of them. <laughs> it counts. So, oh boy. Oh boy. Yeah, SQ definitely still a top player. Don't, don't, I'm, I'm my bad. Don't get it twisted, y'all. She's ridiculous with it, but she's definitely showing out today. Not right now. It's Jay Nasty against Tempest. Trying to weather the storm. Waits for the burst and puts him through the worst with the super. Big bite. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> okay. I mean, you're fighting against Zato. You're not going to survive the chip. But if you get a hit and all of a sudden you get the offense going, you can definitely mix your way to victory. But Jonathan Tene not taking any serious risks. Finally gets the hit over there. But Tempest coming in right away with the 5K. Burst. There's that burst right there. You see Leo, they put themselves in the corner a lot of times for that mix-up, and so that's what causes Jonathan Tenney to want to use that burst because then he puts Tempest back into the corner. But Tempest, that's going to kill because Zato has no help. <laughs> As it should be. Zato is oh. putting the pressure on people. Oh, Class no, canceled. they're hard knockdown. 2K, 2K. Mm -hmm. Unleashes the beast with the guard point six H right there. Run through, yes sir. But there's the throw though. Jump to the A. What's the leapfrog on him? Jump K, jump B, five P. Look at the sequence right here. Now Eddie off the table. Gotta stay stable. Throw. Oh, there's the overhead. overhead again. Why does Tempest land that so much? It's just, I feel like Tempest lands it because you just don't believe he's going to go for it again. And then he does. Every time. <laughs> he's too smart of a player. He would never. He would never. <laughs> and then again, Tempest gets the win. That's how he get in them. It's these moments. It's these moments where it's like you don't suspect him to be able to do so. And again, he's very technical. You saw Jonathan Nay was in this, in this range where if a DP was going to come through, we saw it happen. There's going to be a trade break situation. And Jonathan Day was actually looking for the DP outside that range. You saw him, Tempest, just walk up just a little bit, just a minute amount of space for far slash and, and, and heavy slash to, to reach and get a counter hit and start that oppression. He's like very smart and studious. But he will slug it out, though. Don't get it twisted. Do not get it twisted against this guy. Now, corner pressure here for Jonathan, trying to. Tie this up one to one. Oh, there's that check with that 5P, the Jonathan 10A special, that 5P. And now there's that 5P into RC again. That's found Jonathan 10A so much uh, play during the course of these last two seasons. Jonathan, of course, trying to keep that sponsor for next season, most likely going to whether he finishes in top two or not. Oh. But then here mm. comes Tempest. RC of the B sort. He's to find the finish. Trying to catch him with the Simi, but no go. Tempest getting pushed in the corner, but honestly, not too bad. RC right back. <laughs> Tap Dust. Punish the Dust right there. Good stuff for Jonathan today. He might be able to take this back from the brick leapfrog down to the ground. You go. 2D backs away. Eddie off the table, but he's still steady. The 2D again, though, this time from the side of Tempest. Flopping like a fish. Nice starting with that fire slash right away, but Tempest finds his way in. And here comes the pressure here. Gets the offman through the eddy. And was able to hit and get the corner, but then Jonathan Tene slips out of the corner, unfortunately, for Tempest. And now you're trapped in the corner here. So Jonathan Tene is gonna get the wall splat, the wall break, and the positive meter bonus. And Tempest runs forward into sweep after the wall transition. There's the raw overhead again. <laughs> Man. Yo, the way Tempest is playing, it's so hard to read the rhyme rhythm what he wants to do all the time. Why RC in the cap like that, take back the turn? Oppose. Oh, 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 o
Doesn't want to go to a round three. Wants this here and now. Has the meter. Oh, the trade. Ooh. Unfortunate for Jay Nasty and Tempest is going to come away victorious off of that trade. Got more than uh, enough health to actually be in his favor. He going to save her because right now he's in game point. The way Tempest is playing, we keep pointing out these moments of these bust outs, these 2Ds and everything, every so often. It's the elements that make Leo so strong, but if you do them too many times, you're not fine. You're gonna get smoked, you know, you, they're negative or they leave you so open, things like that. He sprinkles them in every so often to get his win. That makes it hard to read. And the amount of, of you know, I, I wanna say like counter hit damage and things like that, but the mix that he gets off them as well. Positional advantage, all that stuff makes it so nasty to deal with and JDS has to be even nastier to take that victory back. Oh, you see him dash up block and then hit the punch. Oh, nice uh, drunkard shade right there to send that fireball back at him. Look at this defense from Tempest. Watched him with the drunkard shade and then immediately dashed forward and started his own offense, pushing Jonathan Tene back to the other corner. So Jonathan Tene trying to fight for that screen space right now with the Eddie and now uses the sword to keep it. And look at that, all the way back into the corner. You thought you got out of there? Nah, you're right back in there. Oh what? An RC. Ground pound to get the get the wall. Oh sorry, wall turn. Back turn. And the throw once again. The strike throw off this character. Yo, gets the run through. Wasn't expecting it. You might be through. Oh, More touch. Boy. One pixel. Still alive. Yeah, you throw out that two. What? It didn't hit. What? It went through it, but then they clashed and Tempest was like, no, I'm hitting crouching punch faster than you. Oh, that was such a nice fight to go right through there. The Berserker Slash. Hey, opposing play, but now Eddie up the table, and that's exactly when Tempest wants to go in. Gets a 5P counter hit, side switch. Oh, he's got the bar at the bottom for one more hit into the super to seal it. After the IB, immediately Red RCs to keep solid, and I love this pressure. Yo, put you, that's using your head. You're dead. Whipping that 6P, one more touch. Wait, the back up from Jonathan Tanae. Not yet, not yet. Hang on a second. Now, the hard part, right? Well, Jonathan is about to build that meter. If he can get the hit, oh, he's going to go Ooh. for the shark just to get the lockdown over here. But he trades. Tempest says, you know what? If I trade, I win. What a genius. <laughs> Knew he couldn't win, but it just needed that one hit. So he was like, you know what? I am hitting this button. I don't care that you <laughs> activated that shark. Let's go. The trade Tempest goes ahead 3-0. Wow! <laughs> Tempest said, Tempest said, you receive MASH. <laughs> you also receive loser's bracket. I receive a path to the winner's side to stay fine with the Tempest. But you have to do that. You have to take trades like that in fighting games. That is a thing. I think people are like, oh, it's a scrubble situation. But like, you look at your health, you look at their health as a resource. And you say, if I trade, I'm going to win the situation. <laughs> I will win. I will be better off. And Tempest is already up a bunch of Ravens rounds anyway. So. Fantastic play for him to do that, and we're going to see some more fantastic action coming up on the deck here. Neumannheimer versus Marvella. Looks like a run back to what we saw from Wednesday night fights where, uh, you know, Neumannheimer was able to move mm -hmm. through the bracket. So, yeah. something different with it out. Series Again, three. remember, keep got to keep putting that respect on Neumannheimer's name. CEO Taku champion Neubenheimer. Again, that was, was that their first... Was that their first offline tournament? I think it was, yes. right? Right? It was. Yes. Okay. And winning your first offline tournament. I mean, even Umi Show didn't do that. Umi Show got second place. I mean, <laughs> what a scrub. Second place out of a thousand man bracket. But then Nubenheimer coming out here and doing one better winning CEO Otaku. A pretty dang stacked bracket when it comes to Guilty Gear players. And that is super impressive. And he is definitely trying to ride that wave here in series e for this 16th week here and try to perhaps get onto that board of sponsored play well i mean he's already sponsored now right but mm -hmm. so he doesn't need the the, the, the partner <laughs> here but you know <laughs> he's like you know what? i'm doing one. just fine <laughs> I mean, if, if y'all want to work on a deal, you definitely should hit him up, you know, see what's up with Oni and see if that's okay, at least for the series, uh, series E play for the season. You know, there might be a chance for that as well. Some of these players are double sponsored with Neumannheimer coming up as the Oni, the demon of this bracket dog and the current demon of Guilty Gear Strive as he, as you have put it, the Otaku winner solidified to play in the, the finals right now. He needs to focus on fighting Marvello. 
Yeah, and Marvello playing really solid here. We have two chips in the winner's side of the bracket right now. Probably not something that we would expect to see here. But look at that risk gauge on Marvello's side. You are definitely terrified. But there it is. He gets the whiff punish with that running slash. And wow, what was he trying to bait out from Nubenheimer? Mm. He just ran at him for a while. Didn't hit a single button. And then just got tossed by the two-frame throw of Nubenheimer. Maybe too focused on the throw or like on the empty bubble immediately, you know. Maybe just too focused on on running and autopilot a little bit. You gotta get that throw because you do not want to let this character come back from the brick. We already talked about how good Nago is from swinging it back. If he's not dead, you could be dead. But that 5k in play gets a follow up. Oh, but the no. back throw though from Nubenheimer puts him in the corner. <laughs> RC burst. This is the worst because it was baited. Not even a size it's alpha play for the quarter carry. There's oh cross my up, god. But he drops the combo afterwards. Oh, and then that's it. You're. Oh, wait, he didn't punish the burst. He actually was trying to. He baited it, but he didn't get the punish. And Marvello's going to get in, get some damage here. But again, this character will not die. He wins oh. the throw. Oh, oh no. The whip. What was he grabbing his demons? Too far out in the distance to get the grip to do it. That is so unfortunate. But these drops, these drops will, will, will cause games. Mm. These drops cause games. Yeah. They make you slip and dip down to losers. This, these drops. And again, you know, you you get you block you get one of those Roman cancels, and when it slows the opponent down, it does extend the block stun as well. You could tell that Marvella was trying to let that wear out, but remember last time he ran up at Neubenheimer and Neubenheimer tossed him. So I think Marvella was trying to make sure he threw as early as possible and actually ended up throwing slightly too early, and he was still in block stun and it just whiffed. Fortunate. Newmanheimer with the first one. To stay solid in scramble situations is a mark of a good player. So Newmanheimer able to pick that up and say, fine. Let's take work. Blood bar at level two. I like this. You have the extension with the range hold, but Marvella with the counter caught him pressing before he could even press. Now press against the wall. He will fall with that party in me. This Oki time is exactly what Marvella wants to put him in the corner. Uh, I like that. Back BRC to avoid that mix, but. The Marvello oh. gets hit. Interrupt the 6K. <laughs> oh, he's on the tapes. Oh, do you see that back dash? And then he RC right over that twos, that crouching slash. And then he's going to find the victory as a result. Man. And we have seen this a lot with a lot of characters lately, a lot of players doing back dash RC to avoid things and find whip mm -hmm, punishes. Mm -hmm. I kind of like that, especially for a character that's going to get the fast RC things like that. They get a lot off of like Chip. Oof. Train didn't quite get in, but does find his way in this time. Wasn't gonna. Oh, the back dash! Ooh. Counter hit gets the burst out of Nubenheimer. And here oh. we go. The pressure the situation flash. goes for the cross up. Finds the hit. That jump cancel. Knockdown. Dump H gets in. RC, RC situation. He's also got meter for a super, but he was trying to bait the burst out from. Actually, he doesn't have the burst. Marvello just dropped that combo. And he even had the meter for a super as well. RC instead, and chases down the back dash. Oh, didn't, couldn't quite finish with the combo, but then the back dash to punish the throw with from Nubenheimer. Man, little bit scrambly, but Marvello will take it. He will take it. Mm. But one of the board filing. I like that dive kick at that 6P range where like you want to preemptively just like hit the slap chop. But the dive kick comes down at the right range. He wasn't able to get the actual hit with it. But it's going to put that in the mind of Nubenheimer, who loves to stay fine with the anti-airs. He loves close slash anti-airs, 6P, 5P anti-airs, and things like that. He is a consummate of checking the skies. We've seen that time and time again. There's something on his page where he hit someone like uh, 2H and things like that, like Fukio 2H, like carrying him coast to coast. So, like, to take that element that your game plan, that you're comfortable off the table, possibly, is real strong. Nubenheimer. Who kills and oh. ends it with a DP Marvello oh. not blocking that, that second part of the sequence. Oh man, Damn. a single hit and one combo, two combos, three combos, and you're dead. <laughs> a single hit and two combos, and that was it. That was it. That's just the way it is. <laughs> Things will That's never be the, the same. That's just the way it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, checking with the 2K into, oh Ooh. no, and then baited out the log. Ooh. Oh my God. Oh, but it's a burst. Okay, okay. This, no. Nope. Close slash. Ah, Ooh. batter Open up. Ass. 
thing. <laughs> what do I say? What do I say? If you if you go up into his airspace, he'll put you in a square space. This man will put you six feet under if you jump. <laughs> and what character has great anti airs? Both slash two H still is still a fantastic one. Boosted up by the bug gate sometimes. It's Nago. Dude, I think Nago might have landed like a total of like ten moves, and <laughs> that was two rounds right there. Oh my goodness. Okay, okay. Okay, Marvello there gets one hit. You can see all of that life drain from Nagura Yuki's side over there. Oh my gosh. Put that 2D. <laughs> Nice Over block on the overhead, Nubenheimer, that defense looking so solid, but then just got, got caught by the frame trap. Oh, they got got, trying to FD, start a stop right there with Marvello. Making that biggest of how he's come, uh, trying to come in. Off the backboard jump, H2D knockdown. Both slash Chasing reset, fast forward to throw. FD once again. We see that bar used for that purpose. Okay. Oh boy, mm. oh boy, oh boy. Oh, and he got the burst. He got the burst and the blood. Okay. Okay. <laughs> it's oh just like God. every I time you that. get hit by Nago, your heart just starts beating, man. Your life flashes before your eyes. <laughs> I saw when I was born, and now I see when I die right here. But it will survive for a little bit longer. So Marvello Woo! gets a counter hit. Quote, yo, you cannot backdash that right there. The command grab able to land. 6K in play. You see Numenheim was up in the skies. Trying to stay solid with it now, still caught up in the corner. He does have burst if he finds a gap like that. If he can get a 2S or 5K in play, he won't even need it. Both slash on the meaty. Oh, that Fukio in the tap dust? That is disgusting. <laughs> and here we go. Nubin, I remember he was the one who had the tap dust RC into the low as well. Here's this pressure in the corner. RC. Oh, boy. Oh, the frame trap, uh -huh. not the counter hit. Gonna have to do the burst right there. Yes, because he has no health and that close slash finding its mark, tying it up one to one. But Neubenheimer is the one that is at match point. Oh my God, RPS, flip the coin. Gets the TP right after, gets a far slash 6H. 2D knockdown, close slash resets, jump H, caught the back dash, won't last, can't pass. Side switch with it once again. Palms, wreck of red RC, jump H again. But look at the defense from Nubenheimer, but the back dashes have been getting him got and caught up against the wall. Right. Gonna need at least probably one or two more mix ups here to be able to take out uh, Nago at this point. But you're stuck in the corner, pressured, got the burst baited and blocked. You got the hit. Here we go. Side switch now. He's gonna gotta be able pin to get him. the. You gotta pin him. Oh, 5P! Stop! 5P to Stop. take that Alpha Blade down. Stop. <laughs> That's all Nago did. He just held out his palm. It was like, stop. No. No more. No more. No more, no more advanced no more mix. mix for you. That was it. Oh, boy. And there it is, Nubenheimer. And you saw it right there. Again, I feel like against any other character, Nago would have died there. I mean, if it, uh, Chip would have won. But he had mm. to drop the combo and go for an extra reset because it was Nago at that point. And that gave Nubenheimer the opportunity to throw out that stop sign. And there it is, Nago Ryuki and Nubenheimer advancing forward on the winner's side. Man said, as as C4 would say, mix, mix is cringe. I don't want any part of that. 5P <laughs> mix is cringe. I don't want to deal with that. It moves on the bracket. You know, I, obviously, you know, people are what they are when it comes to, you know, Nago and like the psychic Nago. However, the defensive capabilities of Neubenheimer over and over again to stay solid, even though the back dashes were kind of getting got, the fact that he didn't drop in a lot of those sequences yeah. where other Nago players would shows you how good it is or how good you have to be on defense inherently. Not just, oh, I have, you know, YRC or DP or whatever, but inherently being able to block someone like Marvello. So we're still moving on the bracket. We've got Red Vittle going up against Bean, the machine. All right, Bean, uh, again, like I said, just running with that chip. Just saw his fellow chip player go down to Nubenheimer. Can Bean prevent suffering from the same fate and go into loser's bracket? In fact, if he does go into loser's bracket, does he end up fighting Marvello? Uh, not quite, not quite. They both have to win one more match. They both have to win one more match. 
But Red Ditto, of course, trying to keep up with what SQ did earlier. SQ, of course, taking down Umi Show. That Bean was, looking uh, solid here for the start. Yeah, being that whip punish game. Looking for that far slash. Is he able to get the whip punish? Went through the wall. Bad situation built up, but Red Ditto fighting back says, No, sir, not me. When it comes to those mix ups, I ain't free. What's him in the corner? DP, Red RC. TP gets to the other side. Now, Red Ditto does still have a burst. No, didn't have to spend it right away. And look at this. Bean's actually just trying to kill off of like little separate hits. Mm, boy. Back dash, safe, but still stuck in the corner, getting away from that sword. Chases it down. Gonna be able to combo off of that. And the no help of Chip. Gonna die to the Rekkas from Red Ditto. That 5k play, also just the, the, the tendency of Red Ditto to be so aggressive on the ground and to keep up with Bean actually is really amazing. And I think it's maybe not where Bean wants to fight. Rather fight someone a little bit more pensive with it, wait for them to kind of whiff punish and things like that, or whiff a button so it can whiff punish. But Red Ditto is not that type of dog. He will slug it out in the parking lot. Red RC close slash for the victory. Red Ditto says, this is my wheelhouse. This is how I win. Yep, so there you go. Red Ditto uh, taking game number one with the Ramlethal. And now uh, Bean going to have to try to figure out something at this point in time. Otherwise, we'll be sent into the pool of sharks and losers bracket. Solstice defeated Nitro 3-1. to one. Umi Show then beat Solstice 3-1. to one. Jonathan Tene mm -hmm. beat Razo 3-1. to one. In the second round of losers, Jonathan Tene and Razo had to play each other. So, yeah, it is a pool of sharks down there. See who's going to swim to the top. Right now, Bean about to make Red Ditto drop. Gets the throw down to the ground. You go 2D once again with the clone right after. Keeping things a little bit tighter and getting a little bit more aggressive. Instead of waiting for whip punish, like Bean just getting in to get that win. Ooh. Once again, yeah. go slash. All right, going to go through the wall here. Close enough to the corner. And now needs the blitz. Has a hard knockdown. Goes for, No, not for the safe jump, actually. Ooh. And just goes for <laughs> raw overhead Rekka kick. Wait, what's... <laughs> I don't think they have bar. Do they have bar? I don't think they have bar. I'm going to be real. I do not think they have bar to keep that solid. Okay. But okay. we talked about this before. B will have those 6Ks every so often, even without the bar. Oh, too far away for that flip. Bean got the whiff punish, forcing the burst out of Red Ditto. 5K, 6 a should play burst. He's just with it. Trying to start a step with the FD, but Red Ditto. Here they are getting the confirms in the knockdown. Board in that sequence. Look at that, covering oh. all the space in this place, the super. <laughs> See the jump slash also, if you would have jumped out, I would have dropped you back down the ground. I, I, I expected, I actually expected to see, to see Chip explode like Mega Man, just like the energy burst, you know, the little circles. Doo, 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 doo. Yeah. Because like he got deleted right there, dude. That was more to bot over. What? What? Wait, what? what? You just threw out a super like a DP to p counter the crouching 2K? Is that what you just did, Bean? Was that an accident? Or was that godlike? That's the Bob Ross. That was a 6K block, but you still gonna drop. I got the Alpha Blade Sigma Male Grind set right here. Perfect KO from Big Bean to put it back in their hands. I mean, uh, Tiger Pop in the chat says that he actually tried that earlier, so maybe that was <laughs> what he actually was doing. I don't know if it was an execution <laughs> error, but if he tried it earlier and it traded and he got it this time, maybe it's actually just a, a, a tactic that he has. Just he's reading the fact that, you know, Red Ditto is pressing a button in that situation every single time. Mm -hmm. I mean, if, if, if you've got that confidence, go for it. <laughs> That's, you know... Talking about Bean, got that dog in him. Saw that, we saw it see Otaku. And I'll tell you one thing, Bean never popped off in his damn life. My man rose his arms twice, maybe, in all of his sets that he had won. But I could tell inside, got that dog in him. Red Ditto, about to fight back from the break. Already spent the first, but back in the corner you go. Drops the combo, unfortunately. So he has to back up to neutral. But you know what? For Chip, for Bean, he's like, I don't care. I'll play this neutral. I'll back off. And, you know, one of the ways that I've described Bean, I mean, he's like a yo-yo, basically, in and out. He'll back out if he doesn't have the aggression going. But here's the sequence again. The fast cancel definitely refunds itself. Trying to build up all that meter. Look at that. From empty all the way to flashing. Now you got to watch out for that 6K. 6K! Oh. oh my god. 
the perfect this this is why i say this, this character even though he's volatile it's hard to think of him as weak he's able to get into his win condition with the quickest if he can get that bar going forward if you get that tension built up that super you're holding all this pressure and you see being going for these mixes the stutter step for the 6k in play even if he doesn't have bar you're looking out for so many things but you just have to play perfectly that's a tall order especially in this game especially against someone like red ditto even though he's pressure up in the corner he may be able to find like a nice 6p for these gaps or far slash first though Offensive oh, style, 6K in play. And Bates out the, the first. first with the back dash. Bean goes up two to one over Red Ditto. And again, that sequence that he had after the wall break was literally, if I'm not mistaken, from zero risk gauge to full risk gauge with that loop of the uh, fast cancel into the fireball clone and then mm. gets it to all the way full and flashing and then just checked a couple of times, 5K. 5k saw if red ditto was trying to stand up or not red ditto did not he's like now is the time 6k counter hit victory that was disgusting <laughs> i mean the wee way being been playing bro just i feel like months after months he's gotten even better and more stable with this character i think after the patch had dropped a lot of people kind of moved away from this character they're like ah this is too much or whatever but now you see the strengths of sticking with some some of these characters where they can't access their win condition where you know yeah you, it's a volatile sort of game but if you can stay sane like someone like bean you can put the work in you get still get the win like we see Bean right here getting the counter hit and already getting in that part where he's about to build up enough bar to hit right up through the wall with the super and right back to what we already saw yep. did, what did i just say chat what did i just say <laughs> yeah i mean it's it's if you've got that win condition and you know how to land it then you're good to go if you're Potemkin, you don't have a win condition, but that's okay because Chip does, and Bean is making the most out of it. Oh, oh. <laughs> put this man down, play. Side switch, all damn thing. Set a step with the FD, the 6K, and play once again. That's the win. Big Bean trying to make this uh, a fast, fast one to get it done so James can stop downplaying his character. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, well you know what? Red Ditto definitely not gonna be downplaying his character right now. Look at this damage against Bean, but Bean survived. Okay, but here we go. Gets hit. And again, the Mega Man explosion. He's just gone. That's the reverse. <laughs> That's the reverse. You get hit and you're definitely dead. You're more than dead. Yeah, your win condition definitely is do not get hit, which is easier said than done in this game. But there's a lot of <laughs> ways to, to prevent that. You know, if you get that pressure, you're gonna go round start. That is a, a part of that, and here we go oh, once look, again. See, you see what he's doing here? He just wants the wall break. He just wants a positive, mm -hmm. me, positive meter bonus. Easy combo, safe jump. Here we go. There's that tension being built up, and if he gets in one time, we're going to see that sequence. Nice 6P from Red Ditto. Red Ditto knew. Red Ditto knew that he was going to try to get in there with that slash, and so Bean does not get that block sequence. Got the low, but didn't oh. chain into the sweep. What happened? I wonder... If that was a what drop, we're just waiting for the burst to pop. Oh, but yeah, yeah, says, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. That was a burst mm. bait. That was a burst bait. I didn't re I didn't see that Red Ditto had that burst there. But, uh, yeah, unfortunately, then dropping his own combo and then Red Ditto finding the hit into the Mortal Botto and to another deleted chip. <laughs> oh, man. Oh. He didn't defeat it right there. Or at least that game. We'll see what happens between the last game between the two, but... Yeah, I like that in reverse where Ditto's finding ways around Bean's pressure up in the corner. And Bean having to consider when that burst is coming out actually is kind of a boon. It's like you can't run your gameplay all damn day. If they do have bursts, you actually have to consider things with the, uh, you know, chat, like, you know, baiting out bursts and things like that. But that allowed Red Ditto to kind of get the momentum back in their hands, hands it to a 10, and just take that momentum back in their hands and wheel it. Uh, but here we go, though. Bean with the throw. He sets the pressure off the OTG. 2D knockdown. And he's got the meter now, so any hit is going to lead into a super wall transition. But the flip from Red Ditto going to get Red Ditto out of the corner. You saw Bean fake trying to get out of the corner for a little bit, then managed to find the instant air dash hit in there. A little bit of a double jump right there. Okay, that mm. actually, the juke worked. And he's going to be able to get the super raw right through the wall. That should be able to kill. Yes. Yes. You know, now we're seeing some wickedness come through. Yeah, Even we've before, often talked uh, about the wall break. Yeah, we've often talked about Umi Show's decision making and stuff, but Bean's decision making looking absolutely fantastic in this tournament. You know, I'm starting to see a little more and more how his mind ticks, but a back throw from Red Ditto to punish the overhead attempt. 
but Ditto has to play how they were playing before, where they were able to slug it out with Pain Chip with that same sort of pressure and that approach. Obviously, you cannot be as speedy yeah, as B with this chip, but here we go. You bought the dip. Down to losers, bro. One more sequence after this, and again, Brett Ditto sitting on all that bar. The burst has got to be quick. You gotta be Watch. careful. You're right. There is a YRC. <laughs> oh, you called it, James. He didn't punish. 2K? He didn't punish it. 6K blocked. Okay. Still alive here. The oh my god, what a tank! What? The tank. That was so smart. I can't believe Rodillo called that out. Swords the situation. Swords once We're again. The back, throw bro. though. Bid OTG plus one more hit to do it. The fadeaway special <laughs> and the OTG puts us at final game. Final oh round. My god, that's a, that window wipers did the windshield wipers did so much damage. It's an OTG. Oh my goodness. Oof. Of course I kill, it's Chip! What do you mean? <laughs> just assume, just assume. If you play a Chip, you say, yeah, yeah, I'm dead. I'm dead. Next hit from Bean. Gonna be right into Super to get that wall break again. Trying to pressure with that slash. Watch out for the 6K trade. That's a great trade. Tries to go low, but nice blocks from Red Ditto so far. Yep, got him with the overhead. Here we go, and it has a meter for a Super. It's actually, actually not gonna spend it. Hit. Goes for the mix-up we'll instead. It. 6K, off oh, opening, there we go, B taking over Red Ditto with all that bar usage to seal it and steal it. Damn, big B on that machine. What a match right there. And again, Red Ditto, fourth place right now in those partner points, has just been playing so solid, fighting for more of those points. And I mean, again, like, how do you defend against a chip like Beans right there? But Red Ditto fighting so solidly, so well, falling just shy after getting it to final game, final round. That is a brutal situation for Red Ditto. Will be going to lose his bracket and definitely has the potential to fight uh, their way out of there as well. Uh, also, oh my God, in loser's awesome. bracket. Jonathan Tenne with a 3-2 win over Umi Show. Over Umi? No. That's what, You're unless lying. they oh. reported it wrong in start.gg. Umi Show is out of the tournament. We're starting to see the cracks here. Not a top eight at CEO Taku. And now eliminated in the third round of losers bracket here at Series E. And again, this is not umi show necessarily getting weaker this is everybody else getting stronger and not yes. and being hungry and not being satisfied hungry. you know they want to be able to fight umi show they are challenging it a lot more and again love the parody that we've talked about love that parody between the players to see that every match can come down to any of these players because of how talented they are i love that energy I'd like to see, I believe, is our host with the most. Let's throw it over to them to see some analysis. So, Umi shows out. Yeah, Umi shows out. That's a uh, top eight, but like <laughs> that is below expectation. Yeah. For Umi show. Now, we will say we've already seen the cumulative standings. Yeah. Tempest can't catch her. Nope. So, regardless, Umi show wins. Umi show is your season two. Series E champion following Jonathan Tenne from season one, but still Jonathan trying to finish on a very big high note here. Uh, of course, his last week representing as uh, Team Vizio because of course we'll be Beast Coast yep. uh, now fully, which is awesome and congratulations to him. Yeah. Uh, but Jonathan trying to go out on a high note is gonna still have some work ahead of him, of course, being in the loser's bracket. But let's talk about what we just saw. Ooh. Because it started with some hype from an Umi Show matchup, but it was SQ in five games yep. taking the win. And uh, Ramothal continues to be S tier, as I have been telling you folks all season long. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get you. I'm just so I can't resist, I can't on, resist. Uh, on the last show, he's like, this character's not that great. And I'm like, you know what? You're, you're just wrong. And we are always excited to see, like we talked about it too, Umi Show definitely mm -hmm. the favorite in the matchup versus SQ, but SQ yeah. super consistent across all of Series E and was able to come out on top. And that's really, I'm really happy to see that. And then mm -hmm. on the other side, you have Nubenheimer, who not only was able to defeat Bean at CEO Taku, was able to take down Marvello as well in a 3-1 fashion. So, you know, sticking to the game plan. You make any mistake on Chip against uh, Nago and you <laughs> explode. That's, that's what we got to see I mean, there. you make that mistake against 
most characters in yeah, the game true. as chip, you die. True. <laughs> Unless it's against like another chip, but sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, the rest of our sets were, were really good. Again, we have. It's not going to be the chip mirror that we could have potentially had because true. Bean was able to take it over Red Ditto and another three-two final game, final round, very close and. You know, Jonathan may have beat uh, Umisho down in the loser's bracket, but the kryptonite of uh, Umisho, Tempest, in the winner's side absolutely blasted J uh, Jonathan. I almost just called him Jay Nasty, but the way he got <laughs> deleted was pretty nasty. I mean, uh, you, you still consider him Jay Nasty regardless. Yeah, you know, yeah, Jay yeah, Nasty's yeah. still going to take some L's every once in a while, but still Gotta alive happen. in the bracket, still in top six. Uh, as we take a peek down, still waiting for some results on the Marvella Super Nude set. Of course, Red Ditto just falling uh, will go up against Shine, so that'll set kind of the stage for uh, the other side of that loser's bracket. Yeah. Uh, but what it, it really sets the stage for is winner's semifinals. Oh, SQ yeah. and Tempest. Oh, that's going to be so good. Nubenheimer. And Bean! All right, They're so. right back running into each other, of course, after playing in Grand Finals at yes. CEO Toku, Taku last weekend. That's so good. And Bean gets the opportunity to get a run back yep. with the chip. So, you know, already got warmed up uh, against Marvello. But Nubenheimer, you got to be able to do it again and replicate those results. But sure. we definitely got to see the strength. And then SQ versus Tempest. Tempest has been on a tear. Trying to get a strong finish at the end of the season can definitely get it done. And I wanted to touch on Tene in the loser side as well mm -hmm. because... You know, this time he was able to beat both the girlfriends. He was able to take down Razo and Umisho. <laughs> All right? That's hard. Like, they, they were putting work in on Jonathan. And there's a d <laughs> there, in that proverbial household, there's a dartboard with Jonathan's just face, <laughs> Jonathan's, like, headshot on it. You just do the Leo fireball and try to get rid of it. You take the, <laughs> the happy chaos bullets, and you're like, get him out of here. But Jay Nasty was able to do it this time. We're going to be able to see them, you know, in future seasons of Series E mm -hmm. and more. And we've loved watching Intel Razo and Razor me show and we've got yes. even more play to see in winter side who do you think takes it today the whole thing yeah the whole thing mm. with who we got left i think it would be great if i would say jonathan if that set against tempest wasn't as definitive oh, yeah. as it was it was bad like and, and granted, like, Jonathan came out really good in the f the first round of the first game of that set. Jonathan came out and made a statement early. Yes. And you and I both kind of looked at each other and we're like, uh-oh, especially because you picked Jonathan and I picked Tempest. And then we, we looked down for a second because we were talking about something else. And, and it was the time over. we looked back, it was Tempest, like, cleaning up the second game. And we were like, oh, yeah. never mind then. Yeah, we looked away for a moment <laughs> and uh, the so, game was over. So I'm leading Tempest uh, really quick. We do have to go to a break here momentarily. I want to pose a quick question for you. We talked a lot about Ramlethals yeah. on camera, off camera, uh, of course, because of Red Ditto and Solstice, a big conversation. Of course, we've been talking about Super Noon here today and we've had conversations about who the best Ram is in North America. Where is SQ? in that conversation Top because three. I feel like so much of the conversation has been around Solstice for a while Red did a big time on the come up and new uh. super new with the struggles where it just top three? I mean, I'd say top second, three. third? Top, top three. Top okay. Three. That's hard. It's hard because SQ, I don't think they've gone to, uh, SQ and Red Ditto haven't gone to as many tournaments as Super Noon and Solstice. Right. So the data isn't there. But online, I mean, I don't know. I think SQ, oh, I can't even say the top three. I can like top five is easier because top three, it's, it's a top Looking up. really good though today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think regardless, like I'm picking Tempest in the set, mm -hmm. but I would be surprised if we don't go five games, especially True. with how that Umi show set went down. Yeah. So, 100%. I'm looking forward to it. I hope you are as well. On the other side of this break, we've got winners semifinals for you folks, so don't go far. Esports should be for everyone. That's why Esports Arena's launched our own tournament series called Player vs. Everyone, where you get to compete at multiple different titles, multiple different locations, whenever you want. Just watch this and check it out. I believe we have the best Apex Legends PvE player. Oh, I think he's supposed to break in the record. <laughs> best Apex Legends player in Scottsdale, Arizona. Whoa, whoa, Tyler, hold up a second. We got someone out here in Salt Lake about to smash the record. What'd I tell you? Salt Lake City every time. PvE has something for everyone. Here in Miami, we absolutely crush it at Mario Kart. Into the final part. Oh, there we go. And that's going to be the top score for the day. See if you can beat that on the leaderboard. The day's not over yet, Luke. Here at Esports Arena Cincinnati, we have somebody who's going to beat the Mario Kart record. So close. But the good news is, you can always try again. That's PvE in a nutshell. So find your nearest Esports Arena, because it could be you atop the leaderboard. See you later.
for nothing, baby. Let's get in there. <laughs> Back like we ain't ever left. It's time for some more Guilty Gear Strive action here at Series E, aka Series E, put on by the beautiful folks at Esports Arena and all the fantastic sponsors that we have supporting our players and also wonderful players that we have too as well. We're getting the fisticuffs. My name is St. Cola. I'm joined with James. I don't see a cat buddy today though. What, what's going on with that, James? For That's a final a good night. Question, for a final I mean, night. I don't know the are. <laughs> Nathan has not decided to show up here uh, today. He's chilling right now. But I mean, I think I, we need to change, you know, we call it Series E, Serious E. I think we need to change that to Sweat now because these matches have been sweat E, dude. Because it has been crazy <laughs> over here. Nubenheimer and Bean going to be going up against each other. But before that, will be SQ versus Tempest on the winner's side of the bracket. SQ mm. on an absolute tear was the one that put Umi into losers and wanted to make this That's advancement right. through the bracket. You know, oh my god, far slash, just a queen of that button. Mm. And here we go. Flash kicks gets gives Leo a lot of pressure. Does get the side switch, but drops the combo afterwards. Maybe trying to bait out a burst again. And now trapped in the corner, but gonna get out with the jump dust. And yeah, SQ gonna use her own burst right there. Try to get some offense going here. Not close enough to the wall for that sword to actually combo into the explosion, which means Tempest has a chance here. The YRC, ooh, can you confirm? Oh no, the throw, the grip to do it. Gorilla Glue, I'll stick to you as Tempest. And again, he loves that throw pressure. After them DPs have been landing, it catches SQ a little bit off their game for just a little bit. Just to get Tempest enough time to get in to get the win. And look at that, the back dash SQ trying to stay away from the throw pressure. The strike throw pressure, I should say. And is able to actually get outside the court. Look at that defense in the offense from SQ. Force it the burst. Ooh, downtown, far S, getting the counter hit, able to combo into the Berserker Slash. Oh, Tempest tried to counter poke, but SQ got in there, got the button first off of the slowdown. Just outside of the range of the sweep, but still going to be able to punish the back dash with that RC. Oh, oh, the shimmy. The shimmy. I know you can shimmy up in the anime games. I got shimmies and things like that. <laughs> but Tempest, do you see like the strike throw that he had implemented in SQ's mind? We saw the, the cancelization off the back turn into the throw over and over again. And then the dash in. That allowed these shimmies to work out even more. That strike throw pressure of, of Leo, I feel like it's not that explored for like a lot of players. And you see it more so with the top level, especially with someone yeah. as technical like Tempest. All right, so Tempest going up 1-0. And again, we saw Tempest in second place for points. And actually, like, let's say Tempest wins this tournament. I don't think that they pass Umi Show, but I mean, they'll be right there. But <laughs> SQ is like, no, no, sorry, Tempest. No, I'm going to put a stop to that now. Use the RC. So when Ramifal hits you with that far slash, far heavy slash, at most ranges, at max ranges, you can't really get much of a combo off of it unless you get that drift RC like that. Really smart from SQ to use that to extend the combo and get the round. Now she's a really good technical. We talk about technical players on Leo's side. In terms of technicality, she's great on the Ram sort of things. It makes this character mm -hmm. look like she has even more depth than... <laughs> What's possible off the low of the super though gets the wall splat and the break. Yeah, off of a quick RC into the Morabato dash cancel. And here we go. Tap dust. Yeah, you can't burst that. SQ ties it up 1 1. SQ says, Look, I defeated Umi Show. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to defeat you next, Tempest. You know, back to back. Can you imagine if you take back out Umi Show and then take out Tempest? That would be quite the uh, body count list right there for yourself. Mm -hmm. That would definitely be something I put up on a mantle. I put that on my refrigerator like I took down this player and this player <laughs> and this player. Y'all would never hear the end of it, but right now it might be the end <laughs> of Tempest. The it's that one uh the meme guy what is it what is his name captain america what the at chris um shoot why can't i remember his name chris you evans? Know, from the yeah chris evans that yeah. when he's doing the walking up and looking at the picture from like the 10 things i hate about you and he's oh, like yeah, smiling yeah. at the picture you know <laughs> that's what it is you're gonna put that up and you just look at it and smile dude oh man 
There's cool too many to Chris's like who who are superhero actors and, and, and oh my god! Wow. The wake up dash up throw, but then With the wake, wake up, up super. Roboto. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> None of these players are holding back. You jump, you dash forward, jump back, jump dust, and it hit. And you had the RC to continue it, Tempest. Oh my god! The decision making. Actually, wild to him. Gets the overhead to age. Ground pound into the super. I think that's gonna reach. That's a big boy super right there. Yes, sir. Does it through the wall? Gonna get that. Oki close slash. Yeah, trying to get out that as much as possible. Try to possibly get out the burst of these sequences right here. Because SQ is living on a prayer. Red RC base of the burst. That's the worst. Of course, Tempest is going to take that off the table. And now we see Tempest breaking down SQ, feeling real ballsy in some of these situations. You pull out the jump B right there. The fact that, you know, we see the strike though over and over again, the dash up though, not the turf from sticking to the game plan. <laughs> I mean, you had to burst there, right? That was the yeah, end yeah. of it. You were going to die off of that throw. So that burst was going to happen. Tempest had that called out clearly. But I mean, Tempest, remember that last match we saw when Tempest turned into the whirlwind at the end? I feel like that was a little bit of that in this last game. All of a sudden, Tempest just started going ham and winning basically with a perfect uh, in that last round there. So Tempest being able to flip the switch right now to go from, you know, from the more careful Tempest style of Leo to the crazy Unga style of Leo, <laughs> that's gonna make him super dangerous if he can keep switching back and forth between the two, because if you don't know what to expect, man, how do you fight this? It's real difficult. And again, that technicality still in there. He's not gonna take it off the table. It's gonna be real hard to deal with overall. And the guard point now is utilizing that button to do with that far slash that SQ has been running rough on everybody with. Flash. Slump Dog Millionaire, side switch with it. Gonna get another side switch overhead. Uh, You're definitely dead. Bar at the bottom just in case to stay up in that face. And Tempest is in that first place position as he is on set point against SQ. This is when I really wish we had stat collectors like professional sports did, man. Because I want to know how many raw overheads Tempest lands and how many of them actually get blocked. Because I feel like the number is ridiculous for Tempest. Again, see what I mean? Oh. And the run through to get the job done. Tempest taking over SQ after she has been on fire. Tempest. There's something Damn. about the way Tempest moves. He's got, like, it's like a basketball player with the head fake. You know, I've often heard, like, as a basketball player shaking defenders, they're like, Man, as soon as I added the head fake, it just changed everything. There's mm -hmm. something that Tempest does the way he dashes, either micro crouches first or something, but he is freezing his opponents. I mean, he's breaking ankles in, essentially in the in the fighting game sense, and he is landing those raw overheads so much, and it is I like I I wish we had a statistician that could just count and find out what his success rate on that because it's ridiculous. It is. It's got to be a lot. There's no way that it's not over like 30 per match because my man has been <laughs> increasing craniums, blessing domes and things like that like a pastor. And he moves on the bracket. But I think also the thing that is is also a pain point is that he's stopping what they want to do like what their comfortability buttons are the comfort buttons mm -hmm. the comfort button for sq for a lot of ram players and also a lot for sq we've seen up this bracket was far slash right he would right. stop that preemptively with his own far slash or his own 5h things like that he would stop that from coming through he would punish it with 5k and leo has a very good time dealing with that button so in this matchup especially the round start he's really great with that and tip was really great with his gameplay now moving on between bean and newmanheimer I Look, think this is Newman the night Heimer. fights. Files oh, yeah, night, you're right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> also, was. don't forget, Nubenheimer just took out Marvello. Gonna try to add another chip to that, uh, to that, uh, to the list of defeated opponents here. So, gonna try to see if he can take out Beam the same way that he took out Marvello. So, you know, Nubenheimer knows how to fight this character. Oh, mm -hmm. but here we go. This is that win condition you were talking about. It's interesting because this is definitely something that Bean is now more focused on than he's ever been before. I've never seen him so adamant about going for this block win condition. And he is it's just going for it because every hit Ooh. he has goes Ooh. immediately into super for the wall break. 
100% with it. I feel like that's, it's, it's funny because like for a lot of characters, their one condition is defined by, oh, I can be mid-screen or more, it's better if I'm in the corner. For Chip, you can clearly see what the win condition is for this character. If I build up far these sequences, and I hit you with the super, then I get to put you in this mix. If you don't have the defense with it to hold it, it's going to be hard. That's why you see Newmanheimer getting preemptive. Finding his way out of the corner, you cannot let this character hit you in the super outside of the corner. And this is why I like Newmanheimer getting aggressive. That's a run back from Otaku. You're definitely right, y'all. I don't know why I just said Wednesday yeah, Night Fight. Great. It's also the run back from Otaku. Okay, okay, yeah. You said Wednesday Night Fight, so I was like, wait, did they play yesterday? <laughs> I wasn't sure. But uh, again, yeah, from CEO Otaku, this was a grand finals here. And uh, Newmanheimer won two sets. He sent Bean to losers and winners finals, if I'm not mistaken. Let me check. I have the bracket open here. I think he was the one that sent uh, Bean to losers bracket. Bean then won. Yep. In winners' finals, Neubenheimer beat Bean 3-1. Then Bean beat Razzo 3-2. And then we went to grand finals. And Neubenheimer, I mean, you saw it at the event. Neubenheimer was feeling himself. He was like pointing <laughs> his finger one more, all these things like that. Yeah, and he was He was himself. feeling, Woo. he was so confident. And he took it 3 to 0 in grand finals. So in other words, Bean in this set right now has won as many games in two sets at CEO Otaku versus Nubenheimer. That's actually wild. You know, that's, oh my God. <laughs> Listen, when I locked out with Nubenheimer, I was like, it's over. He looked at me, I looked at him, I was like, okay. Congratulations, like a championship, <laughs> friend. And that was winter finals, so Nubenheimer definitely has to feel that energy. But being right now definitely feels like he is Playing a lot tighter than even at he wasn't CEO talking. Oh, no. Though that transition into that is uh was looking good. Until now, Newbenheimer able to get that confirmed. Put him against the wall. Five H, what he's playing he's in, six H, OTG. That's enough. <laughs> that six H is one of the most brutal OTGs. I think only second to uh windshield wiper from Ramlethal, dude. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, actually Vina good. actually got in there. Here we go, corner position. If he can get a hit, you know he's going to go right into super. Nice check from Nubenheimer, but Bean with the patience to actually block that 2K. That crouching low kick. I mean, Nubenheimer's really good about putting his far slash and his, his heavy slash in these uh, these sequences. So he builds, up the, he builds on the blood bar, so you don't even expect that he's got enough for specials, but Bean is stopping that from even happening with the jump H and the 6H. Wall break. Just shy of the of the super. So is he gonna BRC in? No. Actually, both players being very patient. Neither of them BRCing after the transition. That early on, you saw that that was like if you had meter, you BRC'd after the transition. If it was not a hard knockdown, and we've seen how the meta has changed because people have figured out ways to counter that, and so it's not happening. Oh my God! The full screen stab. He spent all of his meter. He got that gold burst, and he just spent all of it. Fast cash right there. Rekka's back dash gets a punish actually on the whip side of the second part of the Rekka. 5H, five 5H five <laughs> again, 6H. The DP doesn't even reach. And the health he will leech with the 5P. All right, Nubenheimer says, you know what? And that'll be, again, the only number of games you're going to win against me, Bean. Trying to come back here and win three in a row, perhaps, here. It is tied 1-1. Nubenheimer, as I said, went 6-1 and one versus Bean in winner's finals and grand finals at CE Otaku. Bean definitely <laughs> got thrown up by volume, buddy. Don't let it happen to you again. It's something different, obviously, with it being Series E, but, yo, you want to come through, come through, correct. But Lumenheimer, just on a tear. This is defensive tactics. You know, we not all the backdashes work. Not everything on defense uh, works, but it won't always work for Nago. The exchanges that he gets and how he routes it back in his hands and runs with that momentum is so... It's, it's just a work of art. Quick punish though from Bean against the far slash. He stays outside that distance, waited for that button, got what he wanted, and now gets a throw. OTG, clone, 6H. A lot of pressure right here from Bean, but in that gap, Newmanheimer answers back. Never oh, mind. What a counter check, and here we go. Like I said, instant into super, no delay, and actually it keeps the scaling pretty low as well. Safe jump timing, and now here we go. Here we go. Here's the pressure. Oh, actually, he decides to go for an overhead. He tries to mix it up a little bit, but he's got it now, and he just builds up enough meter for the red RC again. Bean. You, like you said, win condition, get through the wall, get the positive meter bonus, and then go absolutely ham. 
for Exactly. Me. Objective. Break the wall to make a fall. 5H right from the 2S. 5H again as the end of that 2S gets the extension off the 5H as a finisher. Blazeman was not able to come in and even put him on block. B taking that chance to get outside. This might be his last dance. Counter hit into the super. Okay, Here we go. Okay. Win condition. But they both have burst. Right, but the hard knockdown here. Here we go. Safe jump set up for the guaranteed pressure here in the corner. Doesn't have enough meter yet. There, he's got it. Here we go. Pressure and no meter for the YRC. Gets hit. Gets hit. Okay. Actually, that's not 16. a bad idea, but Newberheimer, but he goes for the reset. And it's not enough to kill. So alive. It's a big boy. In the four slash gets that last hit at the tip to do it. Game the game round to round. My I'm God. telling you, man, this <laughs> character will not die. Nago never gives up. Oh, I was with the clone, catching the black in, but only got a little bit of a hit. Then Fukio all the way with it, but Newmanheimer's getting in and again. Them slashes coming through, the heavy slashes, building down that blood bar as much as possible, and you can't go far. If you try to burst at that distance, the Fukio back it just like that. Newmanheimer. Newmanheimer. The Nago I moment, the Nago you, incident. I ask you, chat, does that character functionally need more health than Potemkin? <laughs> does yes. he need yes. more health than Potemkin? <laughs> oh, you don't want to fight a good grappler. Come on now, chat. Relax, relax. Let's let's <laughs> let's calm down. I know Nago's strong, oh, but let's man. let's remember what Potemkin does so you don't let's <laughs> relax. Let's relax. <laughs> Let's, you're with James? Oh, Anyone agree with James gets shot on site? You are so lucky I don't have a sword. You are so lucky I don't have a sword. But Newmanheimer has his unsheesh. Is about to beat down Beam. Oh, man. Here we go. Trying to keep this pressure going. And here we are. Super? Go for the super? No, actually just going to keep going for the pressure. Goes up for the throw. Newmanheimer wondering if he's going to go low for a high. So then you get caught by the throw instead. Here he goes, finds his way in with that dash in 5k again, but the back dash in the back throw, something Nubenheimer is so good at, risking that back dash into the throw in the corner. It's a far slash, the record's all the way down to the ground, tries to get the bite, RC to stay solid. Nubenheimer reminds me of like Axel players using that bar just to say, stay solid, you know, kind of like obviously we see mm -hmm. Hotashi do that, but now no bar to save you up in the corner of that 5k and play Fukio's back in the corner, but that was a setup, <laughs> it was a setup. It was a robbery, but Bean has oh, ended oh, up oh, one, two, three, no bars, burst. please. You know what? I was not 100% sure he was dead. <laughs> I was not 100% sure he was dead. Uh, honestly, honestly. But again, this is the run back. Neumannheimer only lost one game against Bean in winner's finals and grand finals total. Trying to do the same thing here. That was at CEO Taku, but Bean coming back here with a vengeance right now and trying to say, no, not going to happen again. I'm taking this game right here, right now. Look at this pressure. Throws back and forth. Is he going to do it again? No, he wasn't. He, could, he couldn't do it. He was too scared. <laughs> Oh! I get the fight, but that's good. Night. B drops it. Oh, oh burst. You can't. It's so fun to finish. Give. Whips the 6 H. He whipped the 6 H, James. And it's bored the bottom. Neumannheimer. PRC's RC right back. The air throw. 6 H. DP, though, from D. And the dash of the do it. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh my god, he, the, oh, the, oh, the, the, the cojones on this guy, <laughs> to DP, oh my god, oh my god, it's 2-2, two, two. it is 2-2, two, two. here we go, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yo, that, that, that DP, yo, please, 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 mean, please, I'm, I'm, I, I, I can't take it. That DP could have been, that would have been like way negative. You would, that would have put you in debt. That DP would have put you in debt, actually, dog. <laughs> well, right. here we go. You just, you just earned all the money you needed, and you still bet it on red anyway. <laughs> you know, you're like, you know, the mob is after me. They're trying to kill me. I won all the money. Screw it. Let's bet it on black. You know, let's just do it, and it, and it worked. He bet it on it red because you definitely had the right red no that didn't work never mind wrong tense let's continue <laughs> oh. speed challenging on the wake up six oh. feet gets a far slash follow-up right there for the counter hit with that six h but no punish though bean now getting hit with the yrc right 
And Immelheimer taking back the turn. Oh, no. Counter hit, bro. Corner carry as much as possible. Bean trying to put him against the wall, make a fall. He'll do so with that. 6 H well calculated. Now Ooh. the one on set point. Now okay. the one on set point. Here we go. Bean is at set point to try to win this run back versus Nubenheimer. Nice block, and this is gonna be a huge punish. And look at that side switch from Nubenheimer. Beautiful, and you are trapped in the corner now. Nubenheimer trying to take this to the final Ooh. round. At DP though. Okay, buddy spin in, 6H. RC trying to get us the air to air right there. No go, counter hit burst though, puts it back in the corner, bro. Bloody spin in, 5K, take it back to oh, turn like it is. Missed Ooh. with that 5S, and here we go. The YRC gets the plus frame out of there. Interesting, and Nubenheimer jumped away, so he couldn't really punish that at all. Here we go. The pressure beam finds the counter hit on the delayed wreck of the frame trap right there. Gets the fireball, runs in there. Again, the Nubenheimer special, the back dash in the throw, but Bean running in there, no fear at all. Oh. A damn thing in his mind, but the 5K is fine. Nubenheimer, Bean, final game, final round. The backdashes from Nubenheimer. This guy is never scared. He backdashed the 2K and then was able to 5K it. But Bean starting off strong here again, trying to go for that win condition. And this is how he wins. Bean getting into Nubenheimer with that RC built up because there of that is. positive tension after the wall break the super. Oh, he backdashed. You allow Nubenheimer to leave. You let him leave this space up in this place. You better have a plan. Don't let this, let this man hit them hits. Them two S's and five H's is going to hurt. The side the switch. The side switch on the cross up. He gets the throw, but one good combo from Nubenheimer will take it. Face out the Face burst. Face the burst. And there the it super is. Bean, Bean getting revenge. <laughs> Let me see the beans up in the chat. Where the beans at? Yo! <laughs> Where the beans up in the chat? Uh, just like Street Preacher says in the chat, are you not entertained? Oh my God, these matches are ridiculous. Bean is taking it and uh, exacts a little bit of revenge, moral revenge Ooh. right there against Nubenheimer. Now Nubenheimer is just going to be like, yo, bro, see me offline, dude. <laughs> 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 oh, He's man. Like, yo, that's where it really counts. But, you know, you can definitely see that they are, that Bean has learned some things and kept it way more solid and stable. That back dash, I don't know. I thought that was going to be an alternate universe where my man got put down the loose <laughs> once again by Newman Hyman, but he's able to stay solid. Dude. Man, what about? Le Ooh. Let me talk about that for a second. Nubenheimer's back dashes in the corner. You know, I joked about Bean's bravery with that DP, but back dashing in the corner is such a distinct call out against throws or lows. And Nubenheimer's timing on those backdashes in the corner got him out of so many situations. Like I said, I feel like the backdash in the back throw is, I call it the Nubenheimer special. I mean, a lot of people do that, but the, the, the success rate that Nubenheimer has and the calculations he has on that are ridiculous. And man, he had so much success with that, but Bean was still able to uh, overcome, dude. <laughs> And I wish we could see Bean streaming. He'd like this if he wins. Because he is not the type to kind of <laughs> pop up. I know what side he like. He said, he's probably like, see me again. That's what's up. I told you. Give me one more one more match. I right, smoke you. But it's not over yet. They could still meet up in this bracket. It's not over yet. We're now in winner's finals. Bean versus Tempest to solidify Ooh. our winner's side grand finals for the final series e of this season two let's get and, it and you know i will echo what freshman says yes uh hotashi has been one of the main ones to implement that back dash in the corner to get out of there and very interesting tempest has gone with soul what soul what wait Hello? does he hate fighting bean with his leo do does anybody have the lore on this in the chat we not even a may not even a leo it's soul it's soul of all creatures. I mean, that 5K in play could be a big pain point for the character. But I don't, I don't know. I don't know about the soul, bro. Let's let's see if it's if it's shining right now or if it's dim. Burst to stay away from the wind, but Oof. still 6P red RC quarter carry easy. No, drops. Didn't even get the alpha. It's Rothamos out here. It's Rothamos. 
<laughs> it was a drop combo to be optimal. The drop to the combo. reset. Drop to the reset. I mean, honestly, uh -huh. though, uh, that's a skill. That's a skill because a lot of times when you drop combos, I know this happens to me. When I drop combos, I, I, I can't stop thinking about it, and then my gameplay falls apart. Then there are those players, uh, and this is where like a game like Marvel will teach you that you drop a combo, and yeah, and it becomes an American reset because you're like, whatever, <laughs> I've dropped this before, and I already know the situation, so it'll just turn into a mix-up. <laughs> right, right. DP, Red RC, size with close slash to start the party. Remember that bar's being built up. He backed up because he won't get hit with the DP. Bad to bring it down to the ground. Oh my God, that might be the end of the round. Ow. Red RC, DP, damn, Volcanic Viper was with some heat with it. Yeah, and, and Mr. Schism in the chat here with a little bit of that lore who says that Tempest does normally win this matchup against Bean. So there is definitely a history of precedent for why Tempest is going with the soul, if that is the case. Tempest front's face. Yeah, I got that little bit of a whip punish. I should say a little bit. That was a ton of damage. And corner carry. Off the 5P, 2D wall break, Bean. Saying you better switch the other character real soon, but it's not over yet. Tempest could make the comeback just like that. He's got a lot of bar to cook with, but it's going to be hard to put it, that butter in the pan. Yeah, soul is still soul. He can still delete you pretty fast. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and I mean, what some people in the chat are saying, you know, Tempest, so impressive. I mean, Tempest is actually one of the most impressive and strongest players of our current generation, in my opinion. I've talked about how he dominated Grand Blue for the longest of time, and he plays all the different fighting games, and every time he does, he's so strong in just, like, every fighting game that he plays. Tempest is definitely one of those people with the fighting game minds, but... Bean here, Bean has just been playing completely, absolutely insane, taking game number one against Tempest. That was closer than I thought. No offense, Tempest. I didn't think you had a soul, bro, but, like, you know what? <laughs> Keep up with that glow. You know what? Keep up with that glow. I don't think it was that that bad. However, let's see how this next match rolls out. The first match, I don't want to say it's just always data, but the fact that, you know, Bean might be taking off of wares and be like, okay, I remember how to fight this character because there's probably not that many souls that are really – putting in you know the work especially in the u.s side of things in the u maybe but in the u.s maybe not so much so let's it's see so how it crazy. works out he sounds had that far slash range oh my god yeah, it's always so crazy to me how soul has kind of like weirdly fallen off it's not like he really got super nerfed or anything he's still strong it's just the other characters that have be have you know turned themselves in the top tier are just that much stronger and there's that win condition from Bean again. Got this positive meter bonus, the pressure in the corner. Ooh. I mean, we've seen even the soul players switch over. I, I saw Petrified with, with the Kai, you know. So, like, maybe there's other characters that are more stable, even though soul can dump out more damage and sometimes be better in chaos, chaotic situations. However, Bean is showing that he remembers the matchup size with, with the jump slash. Alpha Blade. Alpha Blade, again, fades away from the close slash that Tippus was trying to do. Not working out very well. Ooh, okay. Now, someone in the chat mentioned uh, Kudo Kich. Is Kudo Kich still playing uh, Potemkin? I'm curious about that one because he was one of the strongest Potemkins that was out there. Oh, there we go. Ooh. And people are saying that actually Soul got nerfed really badly. So, I, I mean. <laughs> um, <sighs> Well, I I agree with the, with the t like the fact that your buttons do carry a lot more risk, and against the other characters where sometimes they don't have that risk, or sometimes you know they're looking for the ability to punish that risk, especially when you fight a character like Chip that can really deal with your six S and all the other buttons and things like that. Yes, but it's not like Soul doesn't have a lot of reward. But right now, let's put that off the table. We're going back to the King Tings out here. <laughs> oh man, I mean the way that it looked. It definitely felt like, felt like Chip was a stronger character than Soul is now. I mean, being taken that 2-0, trying to do it. But like you said, Tempest, going back to the Leo, the character that got him here. Very interesting. I want to know what the history of this matchup is. Is this something that Tempest does not feel as comfortable with, fighting against uh, Chip here? Uh, be or did he just feel more confident with Soul? Because right now, he is just slaughtering Bean. 
Dang, you would have never, never known that he even switched his character. Because it takes like that, that second to kind of understand, oh, I'm playing a different character. But Tempest right back in the driver's seat with the quickness and looking way more dominantly. Careful about whipping the slashes, so he'll use that 2K. End it with the hard knockdown of the DP. DP right back is being spinning it like that, and that's such a big risk, but found reward inside the corner. Never mind. You're not fine. Go right back down to the ground with another DP. Ooh, DP right back DP again. B. <laughs> I've got the DP as well. Ooh, counter hit Sweet. sweep. And what a timing on that burst. Activated right before the super. And so he not only was able to burst out of that combo, but cost Bean all of that meter for that. B oh my goodness. You whiff. Here we go. Bean didn't go for the side switch. Didn't go for the run under combo. Just going to keep trying to go for the pressure. Tried to bait out another flash kick. Interrupts. With, is this going to kill? Is this actually going to kill? I'm going to say it's going to kill. It's going to kill. Oh. I would have lost any channel points, but right now, Tempest is about to lose his spot, his qualification in the grand final. And winner side of things, might be going down to losers as Bean is on set point. Bean is playing like a man possessed in this tournament right now. After a second place at CEO Taku, top eight at Evo. I mean, we've like I said, I've been talking about Tempest, you know, with the combo breaker finish, the, you know, the Evo top eight finish. But, you know, mm -hmm. maybe it's time to talk about Bean as potentially, you know, one of the strongest in NA. He's earned that spot with the top eight spot out there at Evo at CEO Taku. And would love to feel that momentum here. Bursting the distance, RC's in for the throw. This is going to be an overhead. You know what's coming. <laughs> nice interruption. Bean knew. He knew what to do. The 5 beat counter hit. Corner carry. This could be real bad as he gets the hit. Oh my my God. friends and me, it's oh a party to send you down to losers. You're dead. Bean, 3 0 in Tempest and solidify his spot. Winner side, grand finals of the final week of Series E. Oh my God. <laughs> Bean oh my God. literally said, Look, I am Mr. 6K. You can't raw overhead me, okay? <laughs> I've got that on deck. And interestingly enough, again, shout outs to Mr. Schism here with the stats, with the with the information here, telling me that Tempest has won this matchup four out of the five past times they've played against each other. So Bean here coming back and uh I don't like I said, I feel like he's always been strong, but I feel like this week has been a level up. You know, when you finish, get to grand finals at an event like CEO Taku, your confidence just grows and you, you know, you you believe a lot of times that it's that kind of performance that just gets you to that next level. So wait, Mr. Schism says he's lied. You lied to me. This is why we need official stats, people. Mr. Schism, why did Akuma666 send Daigo to loser's bracket or not? Did that happen? Did Shin Akuma send Daigo to loser's bracket? <laughs> I'll never trust you again, chat. Y'all are actually foul for that one. We're sitting here looking for you to give us some good info, you know, that good, good stuff, as we give you some good, good gear out here, and you won't do that to us. That's actually crazy. Mr. Mr. Kism, I guess what, you are so I don't got a sword. You get timed up for like three seconds. I would, I would. Pow, pow, pow. But anyway, we're not seeing any pow, pow, pow today. What we're going to see right now is the beautiful faces of our host. Send oh, to them. Man. Oh, yes. Beauty incarnate right here. Double beard. Like a couple of sculptures. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we just got to make sure that we're posing. And uh, these players have been. Jake's over here just kind of flexing. Oh, yeah. Just, just a little flexing on chat. Little, yeah. Just a little bit of chat. I'm going to slice you with these with these guns because no more guns in Wait, the bracket. Wait, why are you slicing with guns? Exactly. Well, that's the thing. There's swords down in loser's bracket, which is the True. ram gauntlet where it's like red dude. I mean, there's no more gun down there. Yeah, no more gun devil. Nothing. Nothing down there. But <laughs> still rams. Rams still in the bracket, but, you know, sitting pretty grand finals winner side. Bean taking down Tempest, who had the most momentum out of any player, and Bean just, you know, it turned it on after um, getting the run back against Neuenheimer. It's like, nothing can stop me now, all right? I have absorbed the power of the one who defeated me, and now I will be number one. Every time we see these really good sets at offline events, I'm like, damn, is this the start of, like, a new little rivalry? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It started with, like, the Tempest and Umi show at Combo Breaker. Now it's like, you get... Nubenheimer and Bean and Grands at CEO Taku, and then they meet again less than yeah. a week later online and go a full five games. And oh, I'm yeah. like, all right, like, 
is being a Nubenheimer maybe one of those fun new oh, yeah. rivalries that we'd love to see in the bracket? Yes. I hope so. They deliver a banger five-game series there. They could yep. certainly meet up again. Of course, Nubenheimer with a little bit of work to do down on loser's side, I believe, mm -hmm. playing against uh, Jonathan right now in loser's quarterfinals. Oh, yeah. But Bean, and Bean. not only does Bean take that tight set against Neubenheimer, but rolling it into the win against Tempest and doing it in the fashion he did take in the 3-0. Oh, yeah. And that as you mentioned, Tempest machine. being like the hottest player in the bracket right now. Oh, and yeah. Bean just says, Leo, get out of here. Yeah, chip chip supremacy right there. And just really coming out on top, the mean Bean machine. <laughs> the meme machine coming yes. in. <laughs> just absolutely obliterating everybody in the bracket. And... It, it, it's good to see because, you know, we talked about the storylines of these little rivalries. Even sure. before that, it was like uh, Hotashi versus Razo. That yep. was, they would go back and forth, or back Razo and forth, and back and forth, or Razo and Jonathan. Or Jonathan and Hotashi. Yeah, it, it's all <laughs> these great little, little uh, love this, triangles. This vicious cycle, <laughs> this vicious cycle of competitiveness. And then Umisho was queen for, for a hot minute, and now the queen has fallen. Rest in peace. Um, still a Series E champion. Yeah, yeah, true, 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 fell, true, true. Fell tonight. Sure. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> fell short, but um, doesn't matter who was felled in the bracket today. We have a couple more matches that we're going to be going through. And, you know. Talk to me about the Ram Gauntlet. Oh, man, yeah. So, Super Noon fell to Red Ditto, 3 yes. 2, so very close. And now Red Ditto and SQ are duking it out to see who is. Number one, two, and three out of the Rams. Um, so that will be. This is the definitive. This is it. Result, this is right? the, the definitive <laughs> answer for today. The best Ram in this bracket, in this studio, in my apartment complex. That's, this, that's yeah. what we're calling. <laughs> that's what we're calling it. This is the litmus test right here. So SQ and Red, uh, Red Ditto are fighting it out for the number one title, the number one headband for now. For yes. now. So, looking at those sets, then. Are you Jay Nasty then over Nubenheimer? Always got to be Jay Nasty. Okay. Never bet against Jay Nasty. At all. Uh, Red Ditto versus SQ. We were already talking about SQ oh, earlier. You were trying to kind of figure out where they fit in terms of the top Rams in the bracket. But SQ had a hell of a run, took out Umi Show. He had a, you know, a solid <sighs> set against Tempest. I mean, here's the thing. With how Red Ditto performed against Bean and where Bean's sitting right now, I have to give it to Red Ditto because of the way they're playing. Because sure. it would be... It, it's hard to say like how the set would have gone if Red Ditto beat Bean, but mm -hmm. very easy to say like with how close. That's the first the person who's been able to push Bean the furthest um, today, at yeah. least. Uh, I mean, I gotta give it to Red Ditto, but we haven't okay. we haven't been able to watch more of the SQ games today, so um, I don't know. I I would love to. I, I don't know. I don't get to see Jonathan it. won. Jonathan won. Yeah, three In two over Newman Hammond. That's right, Jay Nasty. <laughs> Let's go! So this is great because Jonathan, his, his, uh, as we've already talked about, had a little bit of a dip here later in the season. Has not bit. been as consistently in kind of top three, top four as we typically expect him to be. Mm -hmm. But trying to finish on a high note, guaranteed top four. There you go. Will play against either Red Ditto or SQ in that next set uh, for top three and for the opportunity to play against Tempest. So yeah. Jay Nasty, you know, got it rolling, trying to, trying to, keep that momentum going here on the loser side of the bracket and uh you know shout out to Nubenheimer. uh it's such a i mean this is such a tough bracket and we talk about it every week yeah um it's so stacked every every single thursday but for Nubenheimer to have the kind of growth that we've seen uh from him yeah from wmf to series e to then going to ceo taku and delivering on that potential in an offline format yeah Hell of a showing. Super cool. First, top six. First, first tournament. Yeah, first tournament he ever went to offline and he won the thing and now still getting these strong performances online. Yeah. And you know, even though you didn't get first place here at Series E, like the volatility of the game and how strong all the players are, you can't be upset about that sure. because each and every one of these players is gunning for the other players next. Like they are trying to overcome and learn and get better. And that's what's super important because as a region, I think we're one of the strongest Guilty Gear regions in the world because of tournaments like this. So you hear that Japan? Yeah, bring it. Yeah. <laughs> Dice game. what are you gonna do? You gonna, say, you gonna put Johnny in the game and Umito's gonna come and beat up? Probably. Yeah, where's my other Zatos outside of North America? Nowhere, I didn't think so. Latif is pretty nasty, bro. I know he didn't get top eight. <laughs> What's He's, that? What's that tweet again? Where's the Where's the copy pasta? When Dude, I love it? shout out to Latif, bro. His copy pasta. That was the most powerful tweet I've ever seen. Oh man, the FGC was popping off. Oh, it was after great. That. That was, it was great. But yeah, you can't wonderful. you can't sleep on Latif, bro. No, you can't. Latif's crack. You can't. You can't. My man, my man is mad good, mad good. And uh, we've had such a great tournament so Definitely far today, not. and we've got a little bit more left to go. But you've got to watch these because we got mad good sponsors below us. You can see everything down there that have been supporting us in Series E and they help support the whole show. So stay tuned before we get into the last couple of sets and uh, we've had a great time so far. We'll see you soon.
the chicken is this crispy and this tasty, it doesn't matter what else is for dinner. Tyson Crispy Strips are so delicious, they'll be your favorite part of every meal. More crispy chicken, more family faves, more to love. Tyson. I don't know who I can trust anymore, Cola. I just, I don't know who I can trust anymore, man. I used to, chat used to give me all this good information. It just takes one person to kill your faith like this, to kill your belief in the goodness of pe- No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's all good, it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's all good. Obviously, we're all having a great time here. It's not that serious, all right? Well, actually, it is. The gameplay is serious, but we're all here enjoying ourselves, having a great time, watching some high-level matches here, and it is absolutely crazy. They took. I, I do want to point out one thing. They mentioned that Jonathan Tene beat Nubenheimer in Losers. Nubenheimer actually beat Jonathan Tene at CEO Taku, so Nubenheimer Nubenheimer has lost to two runbacks from CE Otaku. <laughs> That's what I want to see. That's the energy I want to see. Not just this same person dominating. I want people to look at their tapes and be like, how do I win? How do I get my revenge and get the end? That's what I want to see in the fighting game community. Not just, oh, this person's at the top and you just like lack in a sidekick. I like that energy of the Guild of Gear community out here in the US. Everybody, as you have pointed out, as I pointed out, as so many people have been pointing out now and seeing now, all these players are trying to be at the top spot. It's not Umi getting weaker. It's not Hotasha getting weaker. It's not uh, Nubenheimer getting weaker. It's players getting better. And right yeah. now, we're going to see it's better between Red Ditto versus Jonathan Tanae. Red Ditto having to go through SQ in that mirror match. And then before <laughs> that, I take down Super Nuso. Two Ram mirror matches to go for Fadis Auto. Whoa, wait. What? Oh. oh, there we go. <laughs> What? I can't even trust production anymore? I mean, what is happening here? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> match is start. Oh, no, match is not starting. Okay. All right. Jonathan Tene, Red Ditto. So, as we mentioned, Jonathan Tene beat Nubenheimer. That means that Red mm -hmm. Ditto did indeed win the mirror match against SQ. So, uh, once again, uh, Red Ditto, I feel like, wins that almost all the time. I came up with that myself. I know freshmen put that in the chat, but I'm not listening to the chat anymore. I'm not believing the chat anymore. That was my own conclusion, okay? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We, we, we will make our own things now. We don't need you anymore, chat. No, I'm just kidding. Jump slash, oh no, 2H into the super. That's gonna be a lot of damage, it won't kill though. One touch will, and for a closer, it's real easy for this character. He actually used to go up for the 2P, 2P, 2P. Uh oh. But uh -oh. the back throw, he went in. Oh, this is how we begin with a ram yeah. pressure. And Ramathal flips to grab the sword again. Throw pressure back in the corner. Yep, and there we go. Gonna get the wall break over here. Slam. Now, uh, Zato has the BRC. Yeah, but you see, that's why they hit the button on immediate transition. That's how you stop that uh, BRC tech these days. And look at this, Red Ditto about to make the comeback. No, it's falling just short. Able to get that burst away from the worst. I like that five kilo from Jonathan today and gets a fantastic round star. I didn't like how we kind of went in to get that wing. Don't really have to fight that character after that wall splat, uh, wall break situation. But now he is in against Red Ditto. 6P, RC right after the invite hell. Yeah, that pressure. Here? Yeah, finds the throw right there. Saw that Red Ditto was break blocking very diligently. Had the armor break as well. And there we go. The perfect for Jonathan Tene. Now, oh, good play there with Jonathan Tene. Routing it back from the brink. That that could have been a Ram. Ram incident right there. That could have <laughs> been one. Oh, man. All right. So, oh, and by the way, oh, guess who decided to finally show up here? Oh, there he is. Oh, there he is. There he is. The boy has finally showed up. Oh, God. He is such... He's so heavy, dude. This cat is ginormous, <laughs> I swear. At least you can lift yours. I can't lift Odin. 
<laughs> I can't. <laughs> I mean, me, that, I'm like, hey, I can't lift you, bro. <laughs> that's dog. I mean, I've told myself if I ever get myself a dog, I want one that's like Gino. I want the kind of dog that can knock me down when I enter the door. Like, yeah, that's that's the kind of thing I want. So, all love. Yeah, those are the best kind. Yeah. Up the name. I mean, my neighbor has a dog that loves me to death. I leaned down to hug it, and it jumped up, and it clocked me in the chin. It literally showed to me, and it was so painful. <laughs> oh, man. Should have guarded. Yeah, I know, right? I shouldn't have jumped. No, that anti-air was too strong. Just like Jonathan Tenye, too strong here with the perfect. That's the way you got to play Zotto. Foot on the gas pedal. Do not let them pass. 6P. Immediately, corner carry applause to this man of the stands to make him a fan. Nice. But the back throw from Red Dead, oh, yo, found the gap. It just like that, they both with the throws. Ooh, the Pierce, though, gets outside the corner. This is so good for Jonathan today to use that Pierce play to get them coast to coast to make a gift for the ghost. Super. Oh, this pressure is continuing here in the corner. So much of this match has been this. John, oh, no. Break the law to avoid the burst. You hate to see it, but at the same time, you kind of love to see it. <laughs> you love to see the call outs like that. Uh oh, oh man. Yeah, I just need, man, you gotta, you gotta do, yeah, you gotta do the thing, right? You gotta do the thing. Yeah, I gotta do the thing. Yeah, he's like, hey, I'm here too. I'm commentated too. He loved that. He said, oh, cool. Break the law. That's one of my favorite things to see it right here. Uh, God, I love that cat. He is so cool. Zaza's <laughs> weaknesses. He's blindfolded. You cannot see. Well, right now, I think he can see just fine. You see him bail that burst. I think he's okay. Mid-tier. Yeah, this character's not mid-tier out here. He's been doing too much work. <laughs> Justin A doing too much work against Red Thiddle on game point with the wow. quickest burst. Get some distance with it. A burst on really a block burst. situation just because he was like, you know what? I don't want to deal with his offense at all. I don't care. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, going to get hit. And interesting side switch there. Not sure if that's a tech. That's something that Red Ditto did on purpose. But it worked out perfectly. Oh, interrupted, so that sword's not going to explode. And now Jonathan, oh, but flips out of there with the RC. Okay, close slash, got the back dash. 5P, though, counter it. 6P puts him in the corner. I like that 5P right there from Medina for the anti <laughs> the right range in space. It'll be hard to come back like that. No defense on the deck. All the hits about to connect. The chip don't even matter. He's going to dip and get that low, though. Yeah, and there we go. No, Mr. Schism, I'm not listening to you anymore. No, <laughs> <laughs> Although it's very obvious, and uh, I've pointed it out before, and some people are like, "How did I never see that?" Like the miles per hour, you know, uh, tails name, but Zato yeah, one, yeah. Zato one is Zato Ichi, right? One in Japanese is Ichi, so he's named after the blind, blind samurai. He's Zato Ichi essentially. Ooh. So there you go. Oh, you see the swords being utilized by this character, Ram Too Lethal, as Red Ditto is finding some defense on the deck. It puts some momentum back in his hands. What's also good is that when it he gets some momentum, it doesn't leave his hands, right? Like Red Ditto gets enough momentum to put uh, the Zotto, you know, our Zotto friend up in the corner. And all you're doing is Zotto's looking for a back throw. You're looking for a wire receiver to get the bar like that or, or a burst. You don't really have any other, you know, defensive options besides, like, a bar A, 5P, or 2P. But that only really matters when you have RC bar to, to find extension for the corner carry or a way out. <laughs> Chopping Eddie right at the start right there. So Jonathan Tenney needs to fight without that Eddie, but gets a gold burst. So that's huge right now because now he's going to have, well, that's oh. not what I thought he was going to have access to. Was that a back dash? RC quick cancel and the jump dust. Is that what it was? Mm -hmm. That's what I was mm -hmm. expecting right there. But what a beautiful burst from Red Ditto. You making sure that he takes not only the pressure away, but also makes sure Jonathan uses up that meter and loses that resource. And there's Red Ditto with the classic conversion off of the jump punches in the corner, delaying a little bit into the sword slash into the RC. Nice. Really great stuff right here. 6P though, round start with it. Jonathan A, see that the, the uh, momentum is leaving his hands with the quickness. Just make it clap it just like that. Jump D, close slash. Just into the wall with the super. Yes, sir. Oki going to forward. That means fresh. Pierce. That means a lot of things. And the bar back like that. Yep. Corner carry. Fresh Eddie meter here. And look at that. Oh, you got a full bar again. But oh, 
Not gonna spend anything for the sword just yet. Gonna be just get the Eddie raw there and use the meter for the RC. Gets the throw into the Eddie combo and uh, Shark. Shark Tank must make a deal right now. The only deal I see is Red Dead walking away with nothing. Six P round start once again. Nothing A. The round starts have been real good for him. Falls it up with the leapfrog. Tried to bounce the burst, but still. Red Ditto caught up in the corner. There it is. Gold edition. Dan Gucci. What a bar to work with. Now, being able to combo out of a throw like that, I mean, it's just, it's so scary when you're fighting against Zato because he can combo out of the throw. He can combo out of the tap dust. I mean, Happy Chaos can't even shoot you out of a throw, right? But Zato's got that Eddie going. <laughs> I thought he could do everything. I thought, I thought Happy Chaos could do everything. However,. Some oh. things that this character can do with the fast RC. Oh my god, jump D. Yo, that jump K. You see that opener? Now about to be the closer into the super. Eat this man up. 80 times his own. One more touch. The follow up, the OTG. Oh my god. Still alive, still alive. Ramathal can definitely do this, but it's the chip. The chip is that is what you're scared of because of that Eddie. So Eddie Gage, no, doesn't even need it back. Just that 5P once 5P. again. Jonathan Tene with that 5P every single time. <laughs> oh, man. 5P incident. Feel good stuff right there to close it out. And that's such a dangerous button. If you would have got counter hit, a far slash that could have been the return of the Mac like that from Anatizer's own Red Ditto. But dang, oh, dang. Did Whew. he play that so well? I love. I mean, Red Ditto had some great moments, but overall, it's the round starts that got better and better for Jonathan today. 6P immediately corner carry you've lost half your life and you're the one scrambling back from the brink we saw more 5p 6p's counter hit combos and things like that that was great but it wasn't enough to take down jonathan today yeah jonathan today again continuing forward was sent down to losers bracket in the second round by tempest nyc three to zero and jonathan Tene defeats red ditto you know what his reward is you know what his reward is to go up against tempest NYC, the man who sent him to losers 3-0. <laughs> Can he? I mean, this has been a tournament of runbacks, right? Like I said, Nubenheimer mm -hmm. losing the two people he defeated at CEO Taku. So let's see if Tempest here can prevent Jonathan from getting a runback here in the loser side of the bracket. And it's a great start for Tempest so far. Already put him in the corner, eliminate Eddie. Stand steady. Pierce, a little bit of damage, but some more corner carries, more importantly, what he's looking for to get outside that corner. You definitely won't get mixed by this character. Slash situation to age. Dance oh. change in the overhead once again. <laughs> oh, he went. It got Tootie. blocked. It got blocked. The raw overhead got blocked. Oh, what? He PRC'd, and I guess Tempest realized it wasn't close enough to have triggered the slowdown. So Tempest just challenged with the 5P. No fear at all. None at all in that heart right there. Dust caught him ducking. Forcing up the burst from Tempest. Here's the 5P. You get so much more off this 5P as an anti air with this character. This thing changes. Deadly button. Pose right there, eating everything up, and then the jump dust double overhead gonna find its mark. Baits out, yep, and you want to hit it. Whoa, no! The, 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 unfortunately, the gaping maw went the wrong way and did not keep the combo going. Fortunately, however, Jonathan still able to clutch out that round, and here we are, one round apiece here in game number one. Again, Jonathan Tene won zero games on the win on the winner side. Wow, zero games. I said this is an alternate universe right now. RC right after DP burst though. Back in the corner you go, but goes right underneath the leapfrog. Knew that there's a gap like that. And gets a side switch. Hold on now. This may be a rerun of what got done previously. Not gonna switch side switch off the 2S just yet. Push up what he does and live that wrist gauge. Pushed enough for that counter hit to land. Here's nice leapfrog conversion. once again. Burst. And yeah, Tempest is gonna burst there. Obviously his last round. And you know what? Nice to get the burst at the guaranteed situation. Mm -hmm. and push them all the way to the screen across. It may have seemed weird to have burst at the end of the combo and a block on the raw overhead again. Oh, chop oh. Eddie. Just slash Eddie. And now Eddie finally back. There we go. Piercing, gonna find its mark. Shove him forward. Yep. Oh, Not what? Much you can do. Throw back dash. Oh, do, 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 do. shade. A 2P. Gonna finish what? it. 
<laughs> Yo, just the raw run through? The raw. It's what? raw. You donkey. It's raw. What? Dude, I feel like I say this all day, but what a decision there by Tempest. So they were both playing so careful, dodging each other, avoiding each other, and then what does he do? He runs up Rosvite to the other side, exactly as Lost Soul said. He sensed the fear. He knew that everybody was so scared to touch a button from an errant, errant hit that he just said, you know what? This move has 10,000 years of startup, but you know what? We're all scared and let's go. And it worked. Man, that is wild, Tempest. Just do something different with it. So hard to read them. Drop to the day. Might be Faltron today. Fireballs also getting Eddie off the deck. The shimmy, the 2P connect, though. Tempest not able to take advantage of that shimmy situation. Now the oppose. Yeah, you were scared of the oppose, so it opened you up for the throw. Here we go, back in this corner. Yeah, and there he is, Jonathan Tene. Not only good at that 5P, but excellent use of that 5H. The the, the the flash kick hitting twice, killing Eddie and then hitting Zato still, but you just ran face first into the leapfrog. And that's gonna be the round for Jonathan. Do a fantastic job of staying stable in this matchup. This this matchup is let's just swing momentum back and forth. There's ways to get Eddie off the table, but things like this are big pain right here, Jonathan Tene. Was able to get that much off of the burst in play, though. Leap Frog caught him dashing in. That situation 2H follow up. Nice. Look at Daddy back and then some. At that snap back, you see him pull Betty at back. Oh, again. Jump back. Cannon. Gets the RC. That's so nasty. It's the Zato cannon, man. <laughs> gets the full charge uh, dust right there. Lets you get extra juggles afterwards. The Shark NATO is enough to kill Jonathan Tenney on the board finally gets a game here versus tempest in week 16 again this is the final week john and Tene and tempest both with a lot of those points uh to keep their sponsors and again i don't think jonathan is going to be able to catch up to tempest right now because this is losers finals they're both getting so many points but again jonathan mm -hmm. trying to send the message i don't think that we're going to see a potential season three without vizio jonathan Tene, because i think that partnership will probably continue i mean check out how strong all these competitors are today tempest all of them if they don't get the win in the end the fact that they have been at these top spots at all these tournaments means that you don't want to drop them if you're a sponsor but right now she's going to drop outside these loser finals jonathan today is losing too much healthy oppose don't press a damn button bro he caught up in the corner back dash Ooh. away for the jump d the north carolina side switch now no stays in front there's the side switch the 5k opener again side switch trying to find situation the wire see i like that Defense and offense right here for Jonathan today. God, what a defense from John Tempest, and he found his way out. And yet somehow Jonathan's still able to keep Tempest in the corner, staving off that counter pressure, but finally a flash kick finds its mark. Side switch and, and the a throw. throw. Mm -hmm. Again, that strike throw, you don't expect it. He's got the stance up from the back, and he turns around like that with the grip. You're expecting like close slash things like that? Oh my god. First away from the fall, the fireball. Leapfrog, caught him coming in, gets a counter situation. No more Eddie on the deck. You have to deal with the normals. Okay, BRC forward. Oh, and yep, gonna use that slowdown to be able to link off of the stand light punch. Oppose being a threat. Resetting it. Mm. 2D from downtown. The floppy fish, 5k. Doesn't get the side switch, but that's A-OK. -okay. He has that corner pressure right here. He's threatening the cross, oh. but the 5P doesn't even matter. It doesn't even matter. He doesn't even need to cross through at all. <laughs> He's about to make a fall. I don't even need to put it to the wall. Dang, Tempest. Tempest. Just poking with a couple of those 5Ps and then able to convert it straight into the squash combo right there. Just bouncing Zato off of the wall and, yeah, just get, and, and goes up two to one. Again, Tempest taking Jonathan Tene out on winner's side. So he's trying to make it a double jeopardy for Jay Nasty. Mm. Are we going to see uh, T Nasty here or Jay Nasty? What do we got? What do we got? Regular nasty or just J nasty? I, I need the I, I need more than just regular. Give me the 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 non sugar free, the extra sugar right here. I'll drop the nasty. Let's see if he can actually do the duty right here. I like that opposed to bait that out and force out the burst from drop today. I'm sorry, out of Tempest. 
Caught him out of the air. Pushed him to the corner. And look at that. The leapfrog going to hit Leo before the fireball was going to catch Zato. Oh, mm. The burst, offensive burst. Tried to go for the command grab, and you saw Tempest with the read to jump back and dust. And that's minus on block, I thought, but yet somehow Tempest got the throw afterwards. Jonathan might have been scared for the cancel. Oh, oh, oh no. The Ainz was too far. Off the slump. Jeez. Oh, the Ainz oh was too God. far to actually connect. And uh, Jonathan today sprung off the wall, but Tempest striking first with the 5P afterwards. Dude, dashing in with five piece. That he has he's such a way with that. Those are an anti air, but oh. on the ground, we're utilizing that to take this man down. We can't be found with the super. Oh my god. It's gonna kill. No, this won't kill, but it will put him on that guesser game. So it might as well kill. You have to hold this mix. Cross through the tech. Oh, Nothing man, has burst. That whole round had been such excellent play and managing on how to fight Eddie and Zato at the same time. Tried to go up for the air throw, but got hit. Here we go, corner pressure, the oppose, gonna be able to get the combo afterwards, through the wall, John and Tene, trying to stay alive here, no, the dash up, oh my god, base out the burst, base of the burst, but the fireball follows through Tempest, 3-1 against Jay Nassi, getting it done, dang, in these scramble situations, able to stay solid, is Tempest, and it now puts himself, loser side of things, grand finals of the last, and last, match of the night last match of this season two but not season three baby because we might be coming back with it but i'm getting ahead of myself and, 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 and we'll hopefully maybe we'll have another season two ender like we had for season one oh. no word on anything yet but man i mean i got to imagine that these guys are planning something dude i got to imagine they're planning something hope we get another one of these offline events to see these guys play against each other here but again it is now that. the run back here being sending tempest down to losers bracket 3-0 remember uh tempest running with the soul in the first two matches for some for some interesting reason but uh let's see if he just rocks with the leo this time and doesn't actually play uh soul at all i wonder sometimes you know maybe playing for maximum excitement maybe there's some matchup stuff that he would prefer in that match maybe if the, even though the matchup isn't like even or whatever it just he feels more comfortable in that match than running the leo however i feel like when i saw the leo play when he played the leo it felt like that was the play right there. It felt like he was mm -hmm. strong. If he would have had more matches, that may have went a different way. That may have been a different game right here. But we cannot discount out Big Bean coming through winner side of things. That is your final match of the night. Big Bean going up against Tempest, the storm that is approaching. Grand finals, let's get it. Mm -hmm. And immediately starts with a throw against the Zvite. Sends him into the corner. Here's that pressure from being in the corner. But as, like I said, the yo-yo. I mean, it's kind of like a horizontal jumping bean, right? He goes in and out, in and out. You see him whenever he, he doesn't push too hard. Sometimes when the enemy starts to block, he back dashes, tries to bait the opponent whipping a button so he can dash right back in there. Here we go, the safe jump okay. pressure. Mm -hmm. Here's the win condition. Plus. Oh, oh, you see him wait and bake? <laughs> he yeah, tried he to bake. Do it, do it. I dare you. <laughs> like a lumberjack, I wish you would. Oh, that's it. Lose oh, with the guard boy. point. There's a DP from Bean. Time for your life too. to get deleted. No burst. No burst. There it is. Finally, Bean gets the burst. But look at that. So close to, t to taking that round. So close for the comeback. A jump. Dust from Tempest out of nowhere. And Tempest completes oh the round one comeback. Yo, back from the brink is, I, again, this was like the play. I feel like either way, it, the soul just wasn't really doing it for him. And now you see how comfortable he is in this match and able to come back in the brink from these like one hit situations. Bean, however, looking for the whip punish, but here's Tempest getting in. Hard knock to the situation. Side switch, 5K, 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 slash, <laughs> slash. Chases the back get the end. counter hit. And again, he's in that back turn. No what way! Super slot him down. <laughs> Tempest! Oh, he gets a counter hit! Dude, what is happening to Tempest here? This is the set this is like the second or third time we've seen Tempest go absolutely psychotic, dude. This is a slash 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 super! <laughs>
<laughs> just went for it, dude. What is happening? Tempest trying to send a message to Bean saying, look, you got lucky on the other side that I picked Soul. I mean, look, to be fair, I was told by Mr. Schism in the chat that he had what? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Not gonna. Uh, anyways, uh, I love you, Mr. Schism. You're the best. Uh, uh -huh. But uh, Tempest here taking game one over Bean here. Doing a fantastic job. I mean, not sure what Bean was doing way over the distance with it, but I'll attempt us to get that momentum back. And just like that, 2K, they get the two, or didn't get the uh, the 6K right there, follow up, but still, he has a Bean <laughs> right where he wants him. Bean looking for some dash whip punishes. Dude, he whip giving punished, him a little bit. He whip punished a dash 2K with his own dash 2K, dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're dead. You're actually dead. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, Tempest <laughs> is trying to reset this bracket something quick right now. Mm -hmm. The throw. Oh, Back to oh, get another God. one. There's that strike throw. How is he so ready to get that? Gets the overhead again. Bean oh, has yeah. blessed and finessed the super to <laughs> put him to rest. That's the second time. Blah, blah. I hope you guys are enjoying this on, Grand man. Finals 2-0 already in about, what, two minutes here? Jeez, like, dang. <laughs> like, watched. I'm, I'm trying, my to, for, huh? trying to present some decorum <laughs> here, but, I mean, Tempest is just going absolutely insane. He refuses to uh, let us uh, <laughs> to let us analyze this because he's just going absolutely insane. Listen, we can put it how it is. B is getting his ass beat right now, okay? He is getting his ass beat, all right? <laughs> oh That's just how it is. God. Look at that. DP, though, from Bean. Could come back with a break because this is game reset point right here for Tempest to reset the bracket and give us more action. Ooh, and finding the gap in between 2K and 2D because uh, he was trying to frame trap with it, I believe. And so Tempest actually just flash kicked in the middle of that. <laughs> There's that range right there. You see the backdash after he whiffs. Tempest whiffs button and then backdash because he knows Bean wants to, like I said, whiff pressure uh, every time he sees Tempest whiff a button. Oh my god! Oh. Oh. Dude, was he able to get the follow up? Here. He won that Rekka. Oh, oh. Five key anti here. Okay, finally gets the knockdown here. The pressure. How can Bean try to capitalize on this? Does get the overhead. There is no burst on Tempest's side. Can this kill? It is enough. Bean takes the round number one here of game number three. Finally puts him on the board right here. Oh, man. 5P again. Anti-air right there. We've seen that so many times. Gets the three-piece with a special follow-up. It's a situation with the jump. HDP again from Tempest. Not being red. Oh, yeah, no overhead this time. I thought that counter hit was coming from Leo, but it was actually Bean with the DP, and he's got the corner burst from Tempest. He knows what Bean's win condition is. Doesn't want to give it to him. Nice throw against the Zvite. My man, Miss Southway, had the PRC ready and steady. Gets to throw down to the ground. Hit Leaf Village explosion. One more hit will do. It can't be landed. Maybe a jump D. Dash up throw. We'll seal it. Bean back on the board. He said, wait a minute. Let me plug in my controller. <laughs> I he said, you know what? My bad. I switched. They were default buttons. My bad. All right, Mike. <laughs> fix that real quick. All right. All right. All right. Here all comes right. Bean. Here comes Bean. I mean, again, he won 3-0. Now, again, two of those games were against Soul, and we can definitely see the Leo here seeming like a better choice for Tempest. But uh, Bean's got to come into this with the confidence that he can just take the next two games and just not even have to worry about going into the second set in Grand Finals. Does go to the other side this time. This time stays in front. Try to frame trap. Does get the frame trap. Gets the burst out of Tempest. Here we go. Again, the I frame trap on the sweep. Mm-hmm. AZ getting preemptive with the 2K 2D immediately before Tempest can even come through with the run through stuff. Wall break, bar back, and then some. Not real Oki, but still being better off the situation. Red RC, corner carry. That's gonna be Alpha play into victory. Bean with a is perfect being... backs off again finally yeah see that with pressure right there he's waiting for tempest to whiff it yeah he's been backdashing a lot tempest tried to dash forward to chase the backdash but instead bean just decided to do a, a, a crouching light kick a crouching kick 
Yeah, backdash is there finally, and that's why you see Tempest dashing forward. He's trying to read Bean's backdashes, because like I said, Bean likes to go in mm. and out, in and out. He's trying to read the backdashes and chase it, and it's successful this time, and he gets a huge chunk of damage for it. YRC. Yeah, with that uh, 2H, but went for the YRC preemptively, just to get some space with this place. But this is no good. Overhead does it raw to make a fall. No bar to make it safe. Run through Ooh, Red RC, you're definitely yeah, through. Yeah. And that puts Tempest on that reset point that he needs. That combo right there was gonna be burst safe. So there was just basically no reason for Bean uh for yeah, Bean to try to burst that combo at all. Mm-hmm. Okay, here we go. Pressure to the other side. And now trying to keep with the frame trap. Every time you block that first hit of the Rekka, you have no idea what he's going to do. Is he going to go low frame trap? Is he going to go overhead frame trap? Or is he going to steal a turn? Here we go. Win condition started. Here we go. Meter spent. Nice YRC. I love that choice. But no, you the cannot smite me. 6K from Bean to seal it and steal it and put himself now on game. Tournament point. We're either getting a reset of the bracket or it's a wrap, bro. I don't know. Dude, the way that Bean has been playing, I feel like this is his moment right here. Second place at CEO Taku, just powering him up right now. He has defeated some serious players here in this bracket. He has defeated Solstice, Red Ditto, Nubenheimer, and Tempest. Trying to defeat Ooh. Tempest again. Is this his moment? B. Let's see right here. 2D knockdown. Fantastic round start right here from Bean. But there's a DP from Tempest. Not being able to be read. Overhead. Burst does not be dead. Does not want to be caught up in that corner again. Have to guess for his damn dear life. The 2 what? counter hit. Nice conversion. The counter hit with the sweep into the dash 2K for the continued juggle. Cool. Wow, you woke up with a dust. I think he was trying to throw. But he must have been like moving the controller back and forth or something. And it came out with a raw dust instead. You are probably dead. Ooh. <laughs> Tempest trying to reset the bracket right here on that set point to do so for the situation, but Bean ain't done yet. Three piece puts him in the corner. Ground pound side switch with it. Yes, sir. Back turn even don't even matter, dog. He got the damage to do so. Check the red. He is almost dead. And the dash up. 2D. Almost about to get the last hit. Burst at the last minute. Can't be come back from the brink. Oh man, if he makes this comeback, stays in front, gets the hit. Here we go, corner, burst, really smart burst. Trying to chip him, wow, Bean challenging against the PRC. Bates off the flash kick. He's got a meter for a super. Is he gonna combo into a super here? You better, yep, here you better, go. yeah. My friends and me, it's a party. I gotta get that Oki going and flowing. I gotta get that pressure, that win condition to get in him and put that pressure on where he can't even, he can't even go for the DFP, but Bean backs off. Bean getting run through and allowing Tempest to reset the bracket. The standoff, but still getting shot. Yo, dude, Tempest Let's right see. here. Go, go, with Again, the, again with a Raw's fight to win the match here, man. Dude, you dude, do not trust Tempest with any of your secrets because he is always spilling the beans, man. And he has reset the bracket <laughs> here. And he is trying to take yet another Series E event. Man, I, I am like... Shocked that Bean, maybe he just try to react with the super to try to see it with some style and, and finesse, bro. You might be feeling depressed because you just let Tempest come back. This is the grand finals reset right here for the final match of the night. We're going to see more Guilty Gear. Let's go. Right. Oh, just challenging with his own 2K again. But the DP from Bean, yeah, Bean has been very, very selective on when he goes. Oh, they're just trying to run 2K each other. And Tempest winning that 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 exchange. And here we go. Just needs one more hit for the kill. But Bean gets his own hit. Tempest has a burst though. Bean dropping the combo there. And the throw. OTG, no. Just gets to the other side with the kick. Tempest with the official lead finally here in Grand Finals. 5P once again with the anti was not accounted, so couldn't get much more off of it. Beam back in with the knockdown off the 2D and immediately get the side switch. Look at his defense here from Tempest and puts on the 6P. He knows the right range to put out those anti airs, and he's not going to be whiffing that slash too far too much because we see Whip <laughs> Beam with the Whip Punish, and you see him bait out a reaction, gets the hit, the super. 
He won't quit because he still has one more chance. The tap oh, dust, mind. of course. You forget sometimes that every character has an overhead. And the tap dust going to take it for Tempest. And again, I mean, Tempest has been landing raw overheads all day. So it's like crazy that tap dust still going to have that effectiveness here. Tempest with the lead one to zero. Mm. Tempest doing a lot of good work out here. I don't know. B looking for these whip punches are not happening. B not getting into his, his win condition is not happening. And part of that is just like you're looking for buttons like this. Here we go. Better round start with it to get that bar built up and then the super. That's yeah. kind of the name of the game of the game plan. Yeah, what's really happening right now is, you know, I mentioned that Bean likes to go in and out with pressure, you know, kind of situation. Tempest has been battling that really, really well. You saw Bean just a while ago dash up and kick early because Tempest had been winning with his dash 2K a bunch of times. And so Bean actually being really nervous and trying to hit buttons super early in this neutral. And it's really throwing out what a conversion. What? Wow. Wow, that reached the 6H at that bit to do it. Bro, this character is cracked sometimes. Beam too as well. And that's a wrap. The Alpha Blade dash up for the Oki. Caught 10% of wares right there. Beam trying to give us more games once again as he is trying to get that game in the front. with Tempest. Catches the back Backfall dash. FD. Gets a burst, but then immediately you're back in there. All right, flash kick to get out. Pressure time. Oh, trying to go for the raw overhead. Actually got checked by Bean. Bean gets the throw, trying to finish this out here to tie it up 1-1. Get it back to a tie game. Nice block on the overhead, but not the second Six one. My you can God. block Bean one overhead. You can oh. block one overhead. You can't block them all. You can't block them all. <laughs> We actually can't. That's actually it's statistically impossible to block every single overhead with a game. We have RC with the quickness and the mental stack like that. It's going to be so difficult to just be so defensive, perfectly defensive all the time. And that's why now we see one of these players trying. This is going to determine so much. You get this game point situation. If you win this one right here, you are going to be sitting pretty, and they have a longer road ahead of them to climb. Oof, gets him with the so that neutral interaction when they are a screen away from each other who wins this interaction right here is basically the mm -hmm. key to this entire matchup between tempest and bean and see now tempest throwing out longer range moves to try to catch bean who's been hitting buttons a little bit earlier that whole neutral interaction right there is the key to this matchup whoever wins that the most in the round is the God, that reaches so Ooh. far. How did that dust from that distance do what it had to do? 5P counter hit as an anti right there. I agree with you. I think, you know, for, for Leo, it helps the back turn mix get started. It helps that super that we see continuously from Tempest. For Bean, we all know what it does. You get the bar built up for the tension, oh. dip it to the wall, and then put it through the win condition. But here we go. Off the mix. What's this? It's in front. Just low, 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 oh. low. Oh, boy. Yeah, you RC? baited it out. He, oh. oh, he didn't kill, but the Zweit is going to do it. Tempest goes up two to one versus Bean. Going to try to end the Cinderella run of Beans right here and right now. And <laughs> it's interesting. So, like I said, what you see from Bean is that with pressure, every time the opponent mm -hmm. whiffs a button, he dashes and attacks. What you're seeing from Tempest is he's whiffing buttons and then immediately back dashing. Bean has right. to try to build a little bit of that extra bravery to run just a little bit farther to chase down that back dash. That's kind of the key right now. But then Tempest will realize that and start whiffing buttons and then hitting another button. And there's the mind game right there. You're absolutely right. You know, it's, it's the setup for the shop. You know, you're linking the, the other person flinch with it. But right now, Bean blending full conversions, full combos into supers, fall to the wall, meet your neighbors, and Bean going to set up shop for once again. Oki into fast RC oh, cancels for the challenge. I like this from Tempest. Do this early. Do this as early as possible. Do not let him build up enough bar where he can rule the narrative Ooh, of the neutral. Geez. And Tempest using the super saying, I didn't think you could do, I could do better. Okay. Here we go. In the hard knockdown pressure situation backs off here. Now watch, Tempest whiffing, trying to fake some stuff, but watch it every time. Oh, and he got, he won the exchange again. There's that exchange, gets the burst out of Bean. Bean wants it, and look at that check. 
Dude, Tempest is playing this neutral so well. Oh my god. But Bean got it. But the flash. Oh, well, he did it. That's it, Rip. Tempest now on set point after the grand finals reset. Can he do it? Can he take it away from Bean? Okay, I think he tried to flash kick in between those buttons, didn't quite get it out. So Bean does get the counter hit and he gets the conversion, immediately gets in there. Beautiful burst timing by Tempest. And yeah, mm. Bean might have to start adding some of those instant air dashes as an alternate attack vector to get in there. Gonna RC off this. Can he get all the way to the corner for the wall splat and the kill? Not quite. Plus frames. Let's find a way in, jump the PRC. Blocks it, but here's the red RC follow up. The dash up, throw, put him down to the ground. B, that's one more round in a possibly one more game. Dude, everyone's saying that CLG was just won by Marvello. So can we get a Ooh. double chip victory here? A double, imagine. It could happen. It could happen as B gets a wall push right through the wall. He's going to fall, get that bar back, that tension built up. He's waiting for that right time to get that whip punch. He's in. He even gets the guard port situation into the super. Bean is so smart, immediately going for the super and not letting Tempest even think about burst. Oh god, oh again, the beautiful burst timing from Tempest, but then the chick with the stand heavy and Bean ties it up two to two. Oh my god. This is how we're going to end the last, or our last season, our last game of the night, season two. This is how we're going to end things. This is how y'all feel tonight. We're going on a limit with it. This is how we, how, how, how it's going to happen. Let's go, baby. Let's go. This Final is, we could not have match asked of the a, night. We could not have asked for a better end to season two here in week 16. Final game. Let's go. Oh. DP immediately tip is. That's a great oh, start for you. Right back at, right back at him. And yeah, yeah so like him. I said, Tempest has been winning the dash up war right here in this neutral. And so being adding the instant air dash jump dust has really kind of changed the uh, complexion of the of the matchup. And so now mm -hmm. Bean has been winning that. Here we go. Going to get the hard knockdown. Win condition. And now Tempest will be on a pack like he on the Titanic, dog. Hold this Oki. The jump age, of course, the party starter. And this is the finisher as Bean is putting himself on set point to win the final match of the night the final season two game oh my god oh god the flash kick out of nowhere here we go the raw overhead big damage off of this pressure oh oh got him okay it was a bait fip card break oh, overhead. overhead super In the are super. we are going to the final game final game final Round. Final round. <laughs> Tempest to be going to the limit with it. Let's go. Run through round start. Sides with the 5K opener. This is about to be a closer. B, don't do something different with it. Bait on oh, the people. Here's a 2D. Gets the counter hit into the throw here. What kind of pressure does he get off of this? Runs him all the way. Tries to go for the throw, but the jump back from Tempest. Beats out the burst. This is probably going to do it. Super? No. Actually, it's overhead. Oh, oh, he's dead. That's it. Tempest. Taking it back from the last game, the last round to take Pete down. Last match of season two claimed by Tempest. And that is the final tournament for the season done by the Storm. That is Tempest NYC, baby. Mike and Ike's own. Tempest asserting dominance once again this guy like i said he's in second place of points right clearly second place in points for these partner players We're gonna build up a ton more points just showing you again people have said one of the best players in strive in na right now but like i said maybe one of the best fighting game players that we have in this current generation because it's not just guilty gear strive that we see tempest dominate in. we see him dominate in so many different games he has a brain for this and this crazy crazy grand finals is proof right there clutching it out being down one round to zero, winning two in a row. Tempest is your week 16. Serious E champion. What an absolute god to go through such a stacked bracket. But I got to give props to everybody that's come through, not only in this one, but all of them to get it done. In terms of all the players and stuff like that, you can clearly see 
the abilities of the players rising each and every single week. Each and every single week you have seen people strive to fight people like Umi and things like that. To fight people like Hotashi. And now I see the scene at the level where you can't even tell who is going to take a tournament. But that's it for me and James. We got to say big ups to everybody at the Esports Arena. Big ups to all the players and sponsors, things like that. But it's a wrap like that. Have a good night. Hats off to Cola and James Chen wrapping up the season perfectly there. And how about Bean and Tempest delivering the best conclusion we could have had with an absolute banger. We go to oh, a yeah. reset, we go to a final game, we go to a final round, and Tempest, Mike and Ike Tempest, claims one final Series E title here at the end of the season. I mean, it feels good for Tempest. We were talking about how he had the most momentum in the entire bracket. Yep. Pulled out the soul in winners, and it didn't turn out to be the right answer. Um, so, you know, a little bit of change up there, but going straight back to the Leo, overrunning, and showing that they are the king at the end of Series E for this season. And even though the season is over, like we said, hats off to all the players, all the viewer, all of the production staff. And, you know, to my co-host, Yeso, having a great time all the time. We absolutely love putting this on for you and showing the best Guilty Gear in the U.S. Um, and you know what? We cherry pick our competition for a reason <laughs> because they're the best cherries in the business. It's like yes. when you go to Japan oh, and you get the white mwah. strawberries and they're the highest quality. It's like yes. $80 for four. It's ridiculous. But that's how good Jeez. our players are. Yeah, it's wild. Just like the and level then, of, of course, competition. As if we look back as the season as a whole, we yep. crown our another Series E champion, as we talked about mm -hmm. earlier, Umi Sho. Yep. She takes the title of Series E champion for Season 2, following up Jonathan Tenney's performance in Season 1. Uh, just off the top of your head, give me kind of your thoughts on what we saw from Umi Show over kind of the course of this season. I mean, we got to see in the first season, we didn't get Umi Show the entire time. And I think just two weeks. Yeah. And I think she won both weeks. Exactly. And she came to the Exactly. Bracket. So Jonathan <laughs> Jonathan was able to dominate beforehand, but Umi Show, I think they, they only lost, they won so many Series E yeah. in a row. And it was just, even with a, a patch adjustment to the character that mm -hmm. made Happy Chaos a little bit weaker, still strong in their own right. And shifted the style of yeah. play that Happy Chaos had it, to play. Umisho still shined and, and leaned into that style, and it's obviously, it's obvious why they succeeded at tournaments. It's obvious why they get so far at Combo Breaker, why they were able to win Evo, yep. and you know, winning the entire Series E. Obviously not CEO Taku or this week, but consistency is key, and we got to see the masterclass of consistency from Umisho. She is uh, a league ahead of a lot of the players, and I mean, like everybody is catching up as well. Sure. So still you know that front runner target on the back i know doing target practice with all the training opponents yeah. and it's you know what the you gotta get that heat off the target on your back but umisho has been a treat to watch and just mm -hmm. seeing them grow um and just continue to surprise us not only with dominant play but comebacks as well it's been a treat and and there's really no debate about it you look at just over kind of the last four months that we've had series e over yep umisho has been the hands down, most dominant player in Guilty Gear Strive these last four months. Oh yeah. Has certainly not won every event, but was and, and is an EVO champion, a Series E champion, has won so many different events, and has been, when you talk about that consistently, such consistently high caliber at every single event, oh, it's yeah. been impressive to watch. And now it just makes me more excited to get ready for season three because now I'm like, okay, it was Jonathan and Rob in season step up. one. Yeah. Season two, the story was Umi Show and Tempest. What's the story for season three? Because those two are going to be back. Yeah. Who's that fresh blood that's going to flip the tables on these incredible talents? Because part of me goes in and goes, no, like it'll it'll probably be the Umi Show and Tempest show. They're that good. But I yeah. thought the same thing with Jonathan at the and end Razo. of season one. Yeah. And Tempest and Umi Show were incredible, and I'm just like, damn, we're going to get some fresh blood in here. The old talent's going to come back and, and, and keep showing up. We're still going to have all these incredible players uh, outside of Series E, like Hotashi, Adventure, Super Noon, and others that come out every single week, and I'm like, damn. It's a good when, does, when does Season 3 start? Not sure just yet, but it is a good time to like Guilty Gear, yes. and it's always a good time here at the Esports Arena. So once again, we'd love to thank each and every one of you for yes. watching. 
Huge shout outs to Yeso, huge shout outs to all our players, huge shout outs to all of our sponsors that make mm -hmm. this magic happen. And you know, Daisuke, your vision, it's looking pretty good because America yes. right now is the top dog of Guilty Gear. And we got that dog in all of us. If we, we are that guy. If we weren't good, the game's ass. But since That's we're the right. best, good job, Daisuke. <laughs> That's right, thanks Daisuke. <laughs> thanks everybody once again. It's been a pleasure, and we cannot wait to, for you to see the next season of Guilty Gear Strive Series E. So don't miss the rest of the week of yes. Series E. Halo and Infinite tomorrow night, 4 p.m., right here. I'll be here. Jake will be watching from home while he's watching Worlds 2. That's right. We will see you there. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a wonderful rest of your night. We will see you very soon. Reminder, uh, if you want info about qualifiers and all that good stuff, make sure you're following us on Twitter. We've got a lot of awesome announcements coming very, very soon. Series E is getting bigger and better, and you're not going to want to miss it. We'll see you later.